council meeting for Tuesday, April 6, 2021. And um, it's all via teleconference. So we'll, the call to order. And we acknowledge that we are conducting our business today on the unceded territory of the six Okanagan people. As a council, we recognize the importance of doing our best to build respectful relationships that contribute to stewardship, the land and waters in the community with integrity and consideration for future generations. And I'll start off by congratulating our neighbor, Chief Byron Lewis, who was reelected and welcome all the uh, returning councillors and the newly elected councillors and hope we have a productive year in collaboration on all of our uh, uh, business that we conduct. So adoption of the uh, agenda is required. Councillor McKenzie and Councillor Scarrell, those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. And adoption of the minutes of the um, uh, March special council meeting of March 9, 2021. Somebody, uh, Councillor Reed and Councillor Gambo, errors or omissions? Hearing none. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And adoption of the regular council meeting minutes of March 16, 2021. Uh, Councillor Scarrow, Councillor, somebody really tiny in there. Um, <laughs> no, there's a bigger picture. <laughs> Councillor Reed, errors or omissions? Those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. And first up, the uh, regular uh, report of the uh, regular district of Central Okanagan board meeting of uh, March 11th. Highlights have been circulated and that uh, is the report. Announcements, the, um, there is a public input opportunity on the liquid waste management plan. Uh, call Councillor Kozub for more information. No, it says the district encourage you to visit Let's Talk Lake Country BC or lakecountry.bc.ca to find out more about the liquid waste management plan project that was uh, launched. Your input is imperative to help shape your community. So go to the let's let's talk lakecountry.bc.ca and you'll get um, more information and the uh, time frame for public input <clears throat> we, we uh, uh, have no delegations am i getting echoed uh no bylaw following public hearing uh public comment for items not included in the agenda. Do we have anybody phoning in or anybody that uh, has expressed a desire for public comment online? There's no one on the line at this moment. No one online. Um, is there a delay um, with phone calls or people trying to call? Uh, for for the live event, there will be a 20 to 30 second delay. So people watching at home right now, if they uh, are just hearing this, they'll then they can call in. So if someone does come on the line, I will let you know and we can put them through. OK. But we'll um, move on then to uh, de development uh, re related applications. And uh, the first up is a development variance permit, so where we do seek public input anyway. And uh, who is doing that? Is that the um, planning department? Where are they? Oh, there you are. Yes, I'll be presenting this evening. Okay. Just share my screen. 
Welcome. Thank you. You're good to go. Great, thank you and good evening everyone. So the first application on the agenda is DVP 2021-002 for 12827 Pixton Road. The property is within the Rural Residential Future Land Use designation of the OCP and the RR3 zone. And this development variance permit application is to reduce the required rear yard setback for a house from 6 meters to 3.9 meters to allow a second story addition. And so this is uh, the location of the property. It's um, off of Pixton Road, um, which, which is off of Cars Landing Road. And an ortho photo um, which shows that there is an existing one story house. And as you can see, um, it is located um, fairly close to the rear property line. It has a legal non conforming setback, um, which is currently um, 4.5 meters, and the um, rear yard setback of the zone is um, 6 meters. Um, it is a, a, a very uh, steep property. Um, and as you can see, the upland property, um, the house on the upland property is um, a fair distance away, um, and this is also um, um, sloping as well. This context photo shows the um, rear yard um, and the rear yard setback, so the existing house. Um, there's an existing uh, cedar hedge. And then this photo provides a little bit more context. Um, again, the, the red gates, the, the rear property, um, and then you can see the, the slope um, and that upland property for some context. And, and sorry, I did forget um, to note uh, to Council um, that we didn't receive any um, letters um, from the public regarding this application um, and the applicant, and I believe the property owners are um, on available um, if Council does have any questions for them. Okay, thank you. Um, here is the um, site plan. So it is showing the existing um, house um, and then they are proposing a, a second story addition um, which would have some living space as well as a secondary um, suite. Um, so the variance is actually um, proposed to be um, a 3.9 meter rear yard setback um, and that's to um, a, an exterior staircase which would be built to access the second story secondary suite. Um, and I did want to note um, for Council that um, if the um, House was located at the um, required six meter rear yard setback. Um, the applicant um, would have been able to uh, just apply for a building permit and would not have required um, to um, apply for a development variance permit. Here is a rendering showing um, the proposed um, house with the second story addition. And this is um, the front elevation. Um, again, the top um, image is that same um, view, um, the front elevation. The bottom um, elevation would be the view um, from the, the rear yard, um, so the view from the upland property, um, again showing that staircase accessing um, the secondary suite. And then um, two other um, elevations just showing um, different views of this. I'm just going forward and I don't know why. Um, the CAO comment, um, consideration of variances requires um, balancing factors in different situations. In this situation, if the house had met the rear yard setback requirements, a variance would not have been required for a second story. Each variance must be considered on both merits and drawbacks. And I can go through the options if Council um, wishes. Um, otherwise, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from Council for the Planning Department? Anybody phoned in with yeah. regard to this um, request? Uh, Councillor Gamble. Thank you. Um, I, I'm just wondering about the staircase. Uh, if that were moved to the side or some other part of the house, um, would it, the variance still be required or is that really the cause of the variance? And of course, I know that the, um, the it was pre-existing uh, the house itself was pre-existing um, sort of they, they had a smaller setback than they should have I believe and I'll have, tomorrow, uh, 
Fire answer that. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. The um, if the staircase would were um, there would still be a requirement for a variance because the rear yard setback requirement is six meters, um, and the house is at four point five meters. Uh, okay, thanks. Thank you, and Councillor Scow. Well, actually, James, I think you got someone that wants to apply online. Uh, talk to Rena. Um, Councillor Scarrow, actually, the person holding on the line is for a future um, application, not the one that's before council at this moment. But thank you. My apologies. Okay, then um, after visiting the property and hearing the presentation, thank you, Tamara. I have no issues with this uh, particular variance application. And um, after you've asked for public input, I would be happy to make the motion um, of option A. We have, I think, asked for the public input. We'll ask twice. Councillor McKenzie, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I actually um, visited the um, property that borders this um, uh, 12, uh, 12940 Cars Landing Road. And uh, I talked to um, Janice Larson, who's one of the owners along with Brent Boyer. Um, and um, they're the ones that uh, when you build this up, they're the ones that would uh, be affected mostly by this. So what Janice has asked, she reached out to them and she didn't get a reply back. Um, but what she's asked is uh, if they would go halfers on a hedge and they would even be prepared to put it on their property just so that they're not staring into their back um, any windows and they lose any of their privacy because of this so um, they're good with it other than that but uh, there is a sort of a uh, little bit of a hedge there but uh, not a very good one um, so they would like that to be um, um, that that to be included into this if we can so i don't know exactly how you would um, how you would word that like I say they're they're willing to give up some of their land for it but they don't feel that it should be 100 percent their cost they are good with splitting the cost so I hear from the planner on that um, thank you Mr. Mayor my understanding and, and um, I'll, uh, my manager and my director can jump in if I'm incorrect um, my understanding is that um, development variance permits um, cannot have conditions um, so uh, we we could not make a, a hedge a condition of this development variance permit. Okay. That. So what what options do we have then, if any here? Can we do do we have the um, the uh, applicant online? I have your like car. It would, be, it would be nice to at least know that they're in contact, and that we don't um, we don't uh, um, make um, neighbors. Uh, an issue in neighbors where there isn't one right now. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple more councillors. Councillor Ireland, <coughs> do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too went out to the property today. I didn't. I didn't speak to the uphill neighbor, but uh, I did speak to the downhill neighbors. And having a look at it, um, I would support this. Uh, I don't believe that a hedge is necessary, so I would not support going after them to that unless they were to agree to it if they wanted to work with their neighbors, but I wouldn't certainly make a condition of it. There's uh, there's not going to be any view of the lake that's removed from this house. Um, you know, it's just that these people are going to be able to see it, whereas as one story, they probably couldn't see much of it. They'll see a little bit more of it, but it's certainly not ruining their view. They still have a full lake view as they had before and uh, so I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be going after the neighbors to force them into to putting a hedge in because of course it would have to be on the neighbor's property to uh, to make any difference so um, anyways I, I uh, if Bill uh, Bill made that motion I'd be prepared to second it okay thank you and I have uh, Councillor Reed um, and Jamie has comments he's made okay. a note Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would um, echo Councillor McKenzie's comments on whether there would be the possibility of the two neighbours working together to, to minimise the impact of this. Um, and, you know, the, the reason that we're seeing a 3.9 
uh, lead to variance. Um, thanks to Tamara's presentation, my understanding is it's purely because of a stairway um, and is pushing it back from 4.5 metres where we have the current setback, um, which would require a variance in its own right. But the reason it's going down to uh, 3.9 is because of a stairway jutting out. Um, so the majority of the building is at the existing setback and the stairway is is kind of encroaching by 70 centimetres into that side rear setback, if that's what I'm understanding correctly. Um, my qu other question would be one of the reasons that um, we are, uh, one of the reasons given in the report is that this is uh, providing additional rental housing in line with council's um, vision and the OCP. So my question would be, it's, do we know that is the case or is the intent for it to be used um, for uh, vacation accommodation. So if we have the applicant on the line or if there's a way of getting that clarification, just to confirm that what we're saying in the report is actually um, the, the use of it or if it's not, we're, everybody's on the same page. Um, I'll take you, Pana, the Tamara. Great, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarity regarding the setback. Um, so the, the existing house um, has a 4.5 meter setback. If there was no staircase and they still wanted, let's say they had the staircase on the, the side and they wanted to put a second story, they would still require a variance to the rear yard setback. The variance would be um, a 4.5 meter um, setback. Um, but because the staircase is located in the rear yard and it's the, the close, it's the, the smallest uh, setback, um, the variance goes to the, the staircase. Um, one other comment, um, I know that they have applied for um, um, a building permit um, and it is for a secondary suite. Um, I cannot comment on um, the uh, the use of it for, for long term or for short term accommodation now. Thank you. All right, do I, ha I have a motion? Uh, oh, Jamie. Oh, Jamie has asked. Oh, uh, um, I'll talk to um, hear from the director of planning. Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. And, and just to add some clarity, um, uh, Tamara was correct. Uh, we're quite restricted in our ability to uh, put additional conditions on variances and uh, development permit matters. Um, they can be negotiated, for example, if there's uh, willing parties. Um, as we have in the past, but in this case, um, putting a condition can be uh, like legally tenuous, uh, to put it uh, nicely. Um, in, in this case, it would also be it would be further complicated by the fact that the condition would be uh, only uh, practical if delivered on another person's property, um, which would not be within our jurisdiction or authorities. That being said. Um, I appreciate the fact and, and uh, you know really value the fact that council has gone out there and spoken with uh, with the applicant and, and the or the neighbors uh, with respect to impact and so on. Um, we can definitely pass along the message, but it would end up being a more civil agreement, more of like a, a handshake type agreement that would have to be delivered amongst uh, neighbors. But we can certainly pass along that this was a comment that was made. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Scarrow, you had further comment? No, I, I just re removing option A and agreeing completely with Jamie that, uh, that this is between two private individuals and it's a private agreement. The fact that we deliver the message that is desired by at least one of the participants is as far as we should go. But I would move option A. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Ireland second and Councillor Reed. Sorry, could I just get some clarification on whether it's short, long term or short term property? Because in our report, we say that it's going to be long term. So I just would like to see whether we can get some clarification on that. Um, the planning department has that? <laughs> planning department or the owner. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I, I am not able to, to comment um, on whether or not it would be um, short term or long term accommodation. Um, the variance allows the second story to be constructed. Um, it, it is possible that the owners could change their mind and, and not want to, to build a secondary suite at all, um, but they do have a building permit application at the moment and it is proposing a secondary suite. 
Where did the information for that come for in the report then? It's, it's written it, it's written in uh, alignment with council vision. Um, um, I beg your pardon. It's written in the section on alignment with council vision that it's providing long term rental accommodation. Yeah, so the planning department has to have had that from somewhere. So I the owner is on the line if council wishes to speak to them. The applicant is? Yes. Okay. We'll hear from the applicant. OK, I will put him through one moment. Mr. Wedland, can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, you are live and council can hear you, so you may go ahead. Oh, um. Has, has there been a, um, uh, a presentation already about the uh, the variance proposal? There, there has, and the question that we would like answered is that the staff report uh, indicates it uh, aligns with council vision regarding long long term rental accommodation, and the, um, the councillor is concerned. Uh, that that is indeed the case or would it be vacation short term rentals? So our, our plan is to primarily look at uh, uh, UBC Okanagan students from the September to end of April and then in the summer uh, we'd be able to have our family or extended family. We just started having grandchildren that sort of stuff. So that's our right. that's what our plan is. All right, thank you. Um, Councilor McKenzie has a question for you or comment. Um, uh, thanks, Mr. Wedlands. So uh, I was talking to your uh, neighbor above, um, Janice, and um, sh she was um, her only concern that she had with your your variance was um, that maybe there was a little bit of uh, privacy um, being sacrificed on both sides. So she was interested in uh, talking to you directly. Supposedly she reached out with an email, um, but what she's interested in is uh, um, putting a hedge between your property. And I know it's not in our in our authority to um, to control that, but she was interested in you two sitting down and maybe splitting the cost. So I was just curious if that's something there that uh, you would be interested in doing. I'm, I'm always amenable to talking to our neighbors. Uh, I'd much rather have a good relationship than a poor one. Yes, that's what, no, that's exactly what I um, wanted to hear. So I, I'm good with this. OK, thank okay. you. Very good. Any further discussion? Any more questions for the applicant? Nobody from the public else has called in. Then uh, I have a motion. Uh, I will need a motion. I think it was um, Councillor Scarrow and Councillor Ireland uh, approving option A. Those no in favor? Question, sir. No, go ahead. Any more discussion? No, those in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Okay, motion carries. I don't hear any nays. Thank you. We'll go on to another one. Development Thank permit you. with variance. You're up again, uh, Planner, Tamara. Great, thank you. OK, here we go. Um, so the next application is a development permit with variance, DP 2020-022 for lot 229 on Hare Road. The property is within the Rural Residential Future Land Use designation and is also within the RR2 zone. This development permit is to allow a house, an accessory suite, a pool, and an accessory um, um, building. Within the hillside, stability, drainage hazard, wildland fire, natural environment, and greenhouse gas reduction and resource conservation development permit areas. And there's also a proposed variance to reduce the front yard setback um, for the accessory building from 12 meters to 6 meters. And I wanted to let Council know that we have received seven letters of opposition um, and they were uh, forwarded to Council. And the um, property owners are available this evening if Council does have any questions for them. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so this property um, is under five acres. It's the end of Hare Road um, within the Okanagan Centre area. Um, as this ortho photo shows, um, it is a vacant property um, and is um, fairly um, densely forested with ponderosa pine trees predominantly. There is a gully that um, bisects the property um, diagonally um, and most of, or sorry, the, the entire um, proposed development is to the north of this gully. Um, I will note that um, our mapping systems do show uh, an unnamed water course running through the gully. Um, however, the qualified environmental professional did investigate and noted that um, there is no uh, defined water channel, no high water mark, um, and no visible water at this um, point in time. Um, and the, um, the area is obstructed upslope and downslope. Um, so the riparian area protection regulation does not apply in this case. Um, I, I also wanted to point out that um, there is a um, disturbed area on the site in the northwest corner, as you can see on in this um, ortho photo. This is a um, photo of the site, um, sort of on the left-hand portion of this image um, from Hare Road. Um, so you can see this um, slope, um, and that is um, roughly the location of the proposed workshop, which would be um, cut into the slope. Um, and then in the, the background, the trees, that's um, the, the a portion of the gully. Um, this image shows the gully. Um, as you can see, it's very steeply sloped and there is an existing narrow trail um, that runs through the gully and does provide access to the southern portion of the site for the property owners. This is the site plan and it also shows the proposed variance. So at the top of the property um, is the, um, the house, the carriage house, the pool, and there's a septic field. Um, and then down at the bottom is the um, proposed accessory structure. Uh, it's a two car garage and it is located six meters from the front property line um, and the required setback is 12 meters. This map is uh, the environmental impact assessment, which was included in the Qualified Environmental Professionals Report. Um, so the red um, is the um, proposed disturbance area. Um, some of it is only um, a temporary disturbance, which um, you'll see on the next slide. And the Qualified Environmental Professional, um, I'll refer to him as the QEP, um, basically, um, looks at the site and puts it into four different um, environmentally sensitive area classifications. So ESA 1 is the dark green and that's the highest environmental sensitivity and the gully has been um, deemed an important um, environmental feature on this site. The light green is moderate environmental sensitivity um, and you can see that um, the, the most of the um, building area is within ESA 2. Um, none of it's within ESA 1. There's no ESA 3 on the property, um, but the sandy colored area is ESA 4, and that's an area that has been previously disturbed and has very low or, or no in current environmental value. As you can see, the proposed workshop is located within ESA 4. It had previously been proposed in this um, sort of U portion of the driveway, and I did visit the site with the property owners and the qualified environmental professional um, because it was encroaching into a portion of ESA 1, um, and we were, were looking to see if there was an alternative location. It was proposed um, that the workshop could be relocated into this, this current location, um, which again is, is ESA 4. Um, they, I knew at the time that they were proposing it to be six meters from the front property line, but I did not realize at the time that that would require a variance. And so I did not, um, or was not able to, to let the property owners um, know it would be a variance until later. Um, but I did want to note that the hillside development permit area guidelines do provide some support um, for uh, setback reductions um, in order to provide some flexibility to locate buildings in areas that have less um, impact um, to the site. 
this map again is from the environmental report and it's the habitat restoration plan. Um, so again, the red area is um, the proposed disturbance area. The yellow is a temporary disturbance area, which is proposed to be um, replanted um, with um, hydro seeding, so with native grasses. The green um, sort of patched areas on the west portion and the east portion are the proposed restoration areas. Um, so um, again, they are previously disturbed areas that will be restored with a total of 44 ponderosa pine trees, grass plugs and hydro seeding. Um, and then the remainder of the property is essentially a no disturb area with the exception of the um, some of the wildland um, fire mitigation um, measures, um, which include um, some thinning, um, some limbing of trees and removal of, of um, some understory. Um, and I will say that the qualified environmental professional and the registered professional forester did coordinate. Um, so in the QEP report, um, he actually notes that the proposed thinning um, may actually have a, a positive impact on the site because of historic wildland fire suppression, the ponderosa pine forest is actually very um, dense. Um, so thinning it will actually restore it more to its natural state. Um, and then finally, um, there is a, a five meter buffer um, in addition to sort of the no disturb area, um, it's proposed um, to buffer away from the um, gully. Um, there is some proposed disturbance of that buffer just because of the 10 meter setback required for the wildland fire um, mitigation around all, all proposed structures. Uh, I am, have included some of the building elevations. Um, again, this is in the hillside development permit area, um, which is looking to reduce the visual impact and, and have um, buildings that fit into the hillside character. And I think that the, um, the structures do achieve that. Um, this is the house. It has um, varied roof lines um, and is actually under the, the maximum permitted height. It's the rear of the house. This is the carriage house, the front elevation, the rear elevation of the carriage house or the accessory dwelling. And then this is the accessory building elevation that you would see from the street. And so you can see it's a, it's a two car um, garage and it's 1,280 um, square feet in size. And then finally, um, the CAO included um, these comments that each variance is considered individually given the unique set of circumstances, attributes and conditions attached to each property and application. There can be benefits attached to variances, such as this case where with the variance, a building can be located within an already disturbed zone. Council must weigh all the factors, including the value of the benefit of providing the variance versus the environmental impact of relocating the building. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from Council? I got one, James. Carry on. Councilor Scarrow. So I don't know if we got Matthew on or if Tanya can answer this, but most of the concern that the residents have brought up is about the existing infrastructure we have there, the road without a cul-de-sac and access is trespasses happening in order for the turnaround to happen. And uh, people are asking if we have any opportunity to build a cul-de-sac there at the end. I don't know what our road allowance is, and that would be my first question. The second question through to Matthew is, is that, does, is, I don't recall any long-term plan or any long-term line on a map that extends Hare Road up to Nighthawk or Tyndall or out to West uh, Okanagan. Um, are, are we shooting ourselves in the foot here by allowing this variant to come so close to what might, might become an extended Hare Road or uh, a cul-de-sac. Thank you, Matthew, for being here. I'll ask uh, Director of Engineering to answer that one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tanya. Um, yeah, through your worship. So uh, two parts to that question, I guess. So the first one in terms of the, the cul-de-sac and turnaround, there is right of way there and there is um, a turnaround as such there. Um, as you've seen probably from the pictures, um, people do park in, in, in that area. So there is space. Um, and the second part of the question in terms of a connection, 
through to the the the, uh, the topography uh, and the issue and the challenges in the area there is currently no plans for for that road to to, to connect through um and i think it's probably worth mentioning as well that, that that is a developable lot and it's very challenging or it's very legally challenging for a for the district to deny access to a developable lot um so i, I understand the concerns with you know with, with the uh the increased development in an area, but uh, that that owner is entitled to access to the lot, and there has been access to that lot uh, previous previously to this application um, as well. I don't dispute that, Matthew. Uh, what I'm asking, I guess, is a a clear indication from you as to whether or not you can deal with our public's problem down there, which is the lack of a paved circle. Uh, cul-de-sac, uh, 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 an improved cul-de-sac. Yeah, I mean, it, it, of course, if the if the if, it, if the surface and the way that that configuration currently is operating is a challenge, then certainly we can we can look at that through operational capital means. Um, there may be another additional element element in terms of um, some better information as to where you can park and where you cannot park. There might be some traffic control measures required there, but it's definitely something we can look into and come up with what we think are the best solutions to deal with that issue. Does the forgiveness of six yards of front yard setback in any way impair our ability to correct that small problem? Um, I don't believe so in this case because all of that infrastructure is located on private property, which we have no jurisdiction over anyway, and the, the requirements of the access bylaw have been met. Thank you for your answers, Matt. Yep, uh, Councilman McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, if I can just ask um, Matthew uh, a question as far as um, clarification on the building that the district is currently um, placing there that um, right at the end of uh, Hare Road. Can you can you clarify exactly what size that is? Because that's also going to be sitting out there as well, right? Right where they're doing all the work currently. Yeah, so I don't have I don't have the exact dimension um, to hand. Um, it is a PRV building, so um, typically they're kind of two and two and between two and three meters squared. I would suggest, but that's part of the water main extension that uh, is part of the the development of the property to the north, where we're connecting that water uh, water main through Nighthawk to to Hare, which is a a very important connection for in terms of the district's water supply system. Um, yeah, but by all means, but I just want to make sure that um, the public, especially the ones that are concerned, already um, realize that there is going to be some building down there as far as our infrastructure goes. So I just want to make sure people were were aware of that. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Gamble. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask um, about the uh, with if this variance is approved, um, what size of vehicles are we going to see? Are we going to see um, backhoes? Um, um, you know, what size are we going to see parking in this uh, in this garage? Um, and uh, I'm asking that mainly because of the parking issue. Um, if they are really large um, and you have more than one, it may or two, it may mean that they would be parked on the street from time to time. Um, and that is a very narrow street. So, you know, that is a concern. And, and I think that's been voiced by the neighbors. Um, along with that, it is a very, very um, steep area into which it will be constructed. And uh, having been there today, um, it gave me the creeps looking at that hillside behind, uh, you know, which is going to be Remove, part of it will be removed um, in order to construct this. It is extremely steep. It looks to be sand, which um, again makes me very nervous. Um, so what I'm wondering is what kind of retaining walls uh, are we putting up? And, and I guess I'm just wondering, are we, are we sure that this is going to be engineered safely? And, and along with that question, or is there a better site? Is there a site that might work better? 
Uh, and uh, that is the question that I would have. It would seem to me um, further up around the corner and uh, where the um, uh, turnaround for the fire department is, would that not be a better spot? Um, so that's just a question. I, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to find a, sort of a, a spot that would avoid the variance, but solve the problems that the people have, of course, to building what they need. Okay. Um, I'll see if the director of planning can answer some of that. You there, Jamie? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, I won't get into too many of those questions. I'd have to leave that to uh, the planner on the file and the applicant who may be able to clarify some of those uh, matters about the intricacies of the site mm -hmm. and uh, the potential use of the like the types of vehicles, for example. The one thing I did just want to add to is um, I did have the uh, ability to speak with our manager of utilities earlier this afternoon who clarified that there would be no conflicts between this proposed uh, development variance permit and the um, and the infrastructure works that were being conducted near the site. So I did just want to clarify that um, because uh, just to be abundantly clear, because I know that was raised in some of the correspondence yeah. and um, hinted at in some of the discussion here. So I'll leave the rest to Tamara and the applicant. OK, we'll hear from the planner again. Yeah, thank You're you, up. Mr. Mayor. Um, so I know that the um, the property owner is um, on the line, so um, I would suggest that he would probably be the best one to answer um, the first uh, few questions you had, um, Councillor Gamble. Um, but I will just comment on the um, alternative locations, um, and and certainly there 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 likely are alternative locations. It's just weighing um, the the environmental impact. Um, essentially, the the majority of the site mm. is within ESA two, which is a a, a moderate um, environmentally sensitive area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the current location um, is within a pre previously disturbed area. So the the impact um, to the the environment is is very uh, limited um, in this location. I will also note um, that a building permit will. Um, certainly be required for the accessory building to ensure that it is built um, to code and, and safely. Okay. Thanks and uh, thanks for pointing that out again. Uh, you know about the environment. Um, there really won't be a lot of trees removed, so that is a good thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm I have happy to a couple hear. of other councillors and then I'll hear from you. Uh, Mr. Newens, is he going to? Mike? Oh. Beg your pardon? Is Miss is Mike Newens going to comment or? I've, oh, well, I've got a couple of councillors and then I'll hear from the applicant. Uh, Councillor Ireland, you're up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just looking at the property and having visited it today, um, a good portion of that area doesn't actually front on a road. So I know that in other cases where the road is wrapped around a property, the property hasn't had front yards or backyards or you know some houses have had three front yards or three side yards so in this case does this property actually front on hare road and do we consider that whole western border of that property to be a front yard mm -hmm. uh, planner will answer that yes uh, thank you mr mayor um only a small portion um that is fronting Hare Road is actually considered the front yard. Um, the proposed location of the workshop just so happens to be um, within six meters of that portion um, fronting Hare Road. Um, so the rest of that western portion that you noted, um, Councillor Ireland, is uh, considered a side yard. With a lower setback then. Yeah. Correct. Right. Thank you. Councillor Scarrow, you had a question or comment? Uh, absolutely not. I'm waiting to hear from the applicant. How are you doing, okay. Mike? Then we'll hear from the applicant. Yep. Mayor Baker, there's also oh, other people huh? waiting online to speak as well after the applicant. Okay. We'll hear the applicant. So what I'm going to do, uh, hello, uh, Council. Uh, my name is Mike Newhams. I'm actually going to hand it over to my son, Mitchell, and I'm going to let him speak. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to 
Regarding the size of vehicles in the shop, this shop is mainly going to be used for um, just restoring vehicles, which is something my father and I have kind of always bonded over. Um, I'm expecting a kid, my wife's six months pregnant, so it's something that I would like to share with my kids as well. Um, it's basically just a space where we can go where it's not cold and not outside to work on those vehicles. Um, yeah, that's kind of all it's intended on being used for from our perspective, so. Okay. okay, we'll go with that. Anybody else? Get some online stuff, Get James. some online uh, phone-ins or... Mr. Mayor, I, yes, I have three callers online that have been waiting. I will put them through now. First, we have John Miller. One. Mr. Miller, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, you are live and council can now hear you, so please go ahead. Right, they're still talking to the applicant in live. So you will have to turn all feeds off in the background as there is a delay and it will cause problems with the feed. So please turn all the electronics off in the background and just speak to the phone to council. They're off now. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get the name. Who is it? John Miller. Sorry. John Miller on 10860 Hare Road. I'm to the uh, north and west of the applicant. Mm -hmm. And uh, first off, thanks for the invitation to talk about the proposed variant. Um, I'll just start off with saying I oppose the variant. I think it's unnecessary. I think it will create some problems that will continue in perpetuity. I think that there are alternatives that could better meet the needs of both the applicant and of the community, and those would not require variants. Um, I have several issues. One is congestion. Uh, if you don't know, Hare Road is a dead end road. Mm -hmm. The road ends and there are four other properties that extend beyond the end of the public road. There is also a turnaround or a hammerhead on the west side and that's used by recycling, garbage, emergency vehicles, and anyone that is on Hare Road and has to get out. Um, on the north, sorry, on the east side, in addition to the driveway, and the PRV station, we have the uh, new garage. There's also probably, probably in the future, a set of stairs to access the trail, which will go up on the north side of the property. I understand that the water line easement will act as a trail. So this garage at that intersection with the reduced setback is going to further um, add to that congestion. And that congestion creates a problem with parking. Uh, Hair Road is very narrow. It's not suited for unsafe parking. And yet we see, uh, as the person that abuts onto the hammerhead, I'd like to say we see a lot of parking in that hammerhead. Even this afternoon when I was out for my dog walk, there were two cars parked in the hammerhead. Hmm. Yeah, this happens, I would say, uh, on a daily basis. People that come for a sleep, have a lunch, take a break, whatever the reason they're parking in that hammerhead, adding another vehicle across that is going to force more people onto the west side and will force more people to park in the hammerhead. And I don't think that is a good idea. In terms of site disturbance, I have a different opinion than the planner. I think that this will require significant local disturbance. Uh, a portion of this flat land, but a bunch of it is going into the side hill, and that will require excavation of quite a high bank on the order of uh, 20 to 30 feet. And I think that there are alternatives on the site which will require less disturbance to the train. And I believe that is a stated principle of Lake Country OCC that we want to do that. Now, there's the question of necessity. The proponent has over four acres of land. He's building two houses on the site. 
Uh, I don't have the site plan or the site views, but I'm assuming there are garages with those houses or at least with one of them. I do think that when you look at alternatives where the fire truck staging areas in the middle, you could either go to the south southeast of that, sorry, south southwest, or you could go on the other side on the north northeast. You could have a building that was as big, you would remain within the same environmental sensitivity areas. And it would also be closer to the house, which I think might be convenient. I have a point about the size of the proposed structure. Uh, the information that was given to us was not complete, but I, my hurt written comments required right, refer to 2136 square feet. I've been told that that is now something on the order of uh, 1250 plus or minus. Uh, let me be clear though, that is still a very large structure. That is a 50 foot by a 25 foot structure. This is not a simple two car garage with maybe 600 square feet. This is something twice the size. And it also has a maximum height of 23 feet. I went out and measured my garage tonight. Mine's 12 feet tall. So I think that the size is very large. And the proponent can build whatever he wants. And I'm quite happy if he wants to build it on his property. Uh, my only concern is that the fact that you require the variance and that it's distance from the road is going to be halved, it's going to look even bigger than uh, it's good. So, uh, well, it may be in his interest to ask for the variance, I don't think it's in the interest of the neighborhood or the like, country as a whole. Well. Uh, my next point is that there's a precedent being set here. The two lots immediately to the north are up for development, they're for sale right now. They have a similar bank structure. I suspect that they may be coming back looking for a variance that will create the same problems of parking congestion that we already have. So those are my reasons, congestion, parking, necessity, alternatives, site service, size, property, timing, and precedent. Okay, thank you. You're uh, welcome. Any questions? Anybody else? Anybody else online, uh, yep. Raina? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have two other callers holding. I will transfer, oh, we one just dropped, so they will be calling right back. Uh, but I have another caller online. That is Carol Boyd. Oh, sorry, we had uh, Brian who had been holding for longer. I will transfer Brian okay. through. Okay, thank you. Brian, are you there? Hello. Oh, sorry, is this Carol? Yes, it is. Okay, Carol, uh, make sure you have all the uh, yeah, live turn my speakers turned off. off. Okay, so you are live yeah. and you can go ahead, uh, Council. Oh, okay, I'm next. Okay, you can great. state your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Carol Boyd. I am at 10880 Hill Road. So next to John Miller, who just spoke, and just to the uh, north of his property, northeast of the applicant's property, or sorry, northwest of the applicant's property. Is everybody able to hear me? I'm having no response. We can hear you. Continue on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so my concerns are uh, very much what John had said. Um, I have no concerns if he wants to build anything within his property. I support uh, him being able to do so. That is Lake Country's role to make sure he is building is appropriate. Um, I just do not support it being near to the road, especially when you own four acres. If you buy that property with the existing conditions on that property because he is a new owner, so it's not like something has changed in the zoning or anything like that, then you should know where you're going to put it. Um, I am concerned that Lake Country would suggest a, uh, moving a, a building into a, a place that would need a variance, um, but that's for you guys to determine that. Um, but the reality is, is that it, it will be closer to the road. It is a visual that I do not want to see um, on the street that I think is pretty special. Um, I appreciate that Penny came down and looked at it. I do believe that the photos that you've shown on that actually flattened that lot incredibly. The driveway looks actually quite 
reasonable on the picture that is on your application. But if you actually go look at it, it's pretty cheaper than that. Um, the fact of having uh, a garage up top already, I mean, so the, the question is, is that, is there a hardship here? And when I talk to people with City of Kelowna, because I know people who are building inspectors there, they say that the first thing that they ask is, is there hardship? So would a workshop have to be there or do they even need a workshop because they already have a garage and could they just do all that differently? That's more that question. So I just do not myself see a hardship. It's not personal, but I also do not want to see this happen on the existing, I think there's probably about four lots on Hare Road that can continue to be developed on. Um, so I don't want to see that happen here. Uh, I also ask, I guess my question is, is why was six meters a number? Um, why not eight meters? Why not 10 meters? Uh, where was that six meters come from? And I guess that question would be to Tamara. So did that significantly change the elevations of how, or how much dirt that would have to be removed, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you um, do know that, uh, Tamara? Has it to do with topography to that extent? Um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I believe, um, and uh, the the owners um, can correct me if if I'm wrong. That um, it's it's basically the the location. Um, six meters um, seem to um, perhaps be as as far back as you could go without really starting to dig into the the slope. Um, the other um, point is that at the time, um, and this is um, certainly my mistake, um, six meters is the required front yard setback for a principal building. So if they were building a house, um, that would be the, the front yard setback. Um, and so it, it is entirely possible that um, they, at the time, they thought that they were um, meeting the zoning bylaw requirements. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Reid, did you have a comment? Question. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks, Tamira. Um, I was just concerned that we haven't really had an answer to Councillor Gamble's questions about retaining walls, because the pictures on the report appear to show the garage as a freestanding structure with siding all the way around it. Um, and I appreciate one of the caller's concerns about the height of it and the visual impact of that. But when we visited the site and we were speaking with the owner, he indicated that it would be placed back into the hillside. Um, so there would be substantial uh, movement of, of earth at that time. So I'm, I'm confused as to where we are. Do we have a freestanding garage with retaining walls or do we have a garage that is uh, set into the hillside and if so, by how much? Go ahead, uh, Lana. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe this question um, may be best answered by um, um, Mike or, or Mitchell uh, Newens if they're still available. Um, my understanding is it will be um, placed into the slope, but I'll let them answer that question. Okay, you're up by the mic or Mitchell. Thank you. Um, so on the actual plan, if you look at the rear elevation and the side elevations, it shows a full height concrete retaining wall, which would all have to be engineered by an engineer and signed off on. Um, it's designed that way. It also shows a four foot retaining wall behind the rear as well, holding back some of the dirt. Um, yeah, planner. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to clarify that the, um, and, and um, Mitchell, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the what you mean is that the actual structure itself is retaining the slope. Is that correct? Yeah, so that's how it's been drawn by our architect. Um, and as we go through the building, permit process with it, the district would require an engineer to sign off on those walls to ensure that they are and meet the structural components that are required by the engineer. Um, okay, okay. We, we don't see that. I don't see that on the plans that I'm looking at. I see a freestanding garage with no mention of retaining walls at all. 
so I'm confused. I'm really sorry. I'm just not seeing what Mitchell's uh, obviously yeah, seeing I'll on his side. Gamble, but, uh, I've got um, the plan. Is, the is a point of information, really? Yeah. Um, and I think the information that I want to bring forward is that we're focusing on the building uh, of this and what we, I think, are being asked is the side yard, uh, the setback. We're, we're yeah. looking at the um, at the setback and that's what we should be focusing on. I did that myself, I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, I think we are getting sort of into but, the weeds. But there is some concern with regard to the impact on mm -hmm. the environment in the location and, and how it's constructed. So okay. uh, maybe There's the planner a and the director of planning can thanks. help. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and and my apologies, Councillor Reid. I, I am trying to to explain, but I clearly have not been uh, as clear as I, I could be. Um, so my understanding is that um, the the building itself, the rear wall, is designed to retain the slope. So there wouldn't be um, so it would be set into the slope. Um, so the elevations are showing a rear wall, but you wouldn't see it because it would be retaining um, the the slope. So there wouldn't be, um, I, I don't believe, additional um, ret retaining walls necessarily. And, and um, Mitchell can correct me if I'm wrong. So, so uh, sorry. I hear How? from the director of planning too, if you wanted to clarify some. I'll go back to you, Councillor Reed. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, Ta Tamara did a good job of, of explaining it, but um, maybe just to put it, Really simply, the, the retaining wall, um, any retaining walls um, that are separate from the structure itself will be 1.2 meters or less. Um, as the as the report notes, the uh, structure itself may end up retaining, but is not considered a retaining wall. <laughs> if if uh, if that helps to clarify things, so effectively, this proposal does not vary any of council's uh, bylaw requirements um, for uh, retaining walls. I got you, Jeremy. OK, so I think I'm getting there, but my question to speak to Councillor Gambles is I'm looking at the impact from the street. How much of this dwelling is going to be visible, um, or the 22 foot high? So then my next question is how much of the dwelling or how much of the accessory building is set into the bank? Yeah, it will get that answered. I have uh, Councillor Koza. Mayor Baker, if my apologies yeah. for interrupting, but I still have one person waiting on the line. That person okay. can go first. Well, they can go first if you want. Okay, they, this person has been holding uh, for quite some time and they were okay. dropped. So no, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take the holding uh, caller then. Okay, thank you. And I believe this should be Brian, can you hear me? Hello, Brian. Brian, can you hear me? Brian, you will need to turn off all background live feeds so that you can hear just through the phone. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes, can you please turn off all live feeds in the background so that we can hear you? Just speak through the phone so that Mayor and Council can hear you. I, I, I Can you hear me? Hello, Brian. Okay, uh, I have the other two counselor or sorry, two callers back on the line for additional comments at council's request. Um, I'd like to hear from Councillor Koza first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to get in there and uh, say I, uh, uh, Jason Nunes was one of my good friends in high school and uh, if you ever courted him I could probably tell you some stories that would get me in a lot of trouble here in the councillor seat. Uh, upon saying that uh, I just want to say that uh, I won't be approving it uh, the way it is because I think if you have four acres you need to find an adequate spot to be able to put it and especially a building this size and this large at the end of a cul-de-sac I just it doesn't fit the neighborhood I don't I don't feel. The other thing is I just wanted to clarify is that I totally hear what Kara is saying, Councillor Reed is saying in that uh, it doesn't have the page names here, but I'm looking at the report and the one that shows 
the garage and the workshop uh, pictured 2-6. It shows the right elevation and in my thought of it, it should show a diagonal line going through the side of the building showing where the elevation would be. So I think that that's very poorly drawn. And to include what she says, the next page shows the rear elevation and it shows a whole big wide building and it should there should be a line through that building that would show it but that's here nor there because i won't be approving it because it's too close to the road thank you yeah, thank you do we have the people online still or no uh thank you mr mayor we have both callers that have previously oh i have brian back again and i have the two previous callers as well okay um, we'll hear them if they have new information thank you Okay, I will put to Brian through, who council's not heard from yet. Hello, Brian. Yeah, I'm here. Last phone night. I'm ready to go. Okay, council, can you hear you? Go ahead and speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Brian, you'll have to turn the live feed off in the background. We can hear it, and you it's about 20 to 30 seconds delay, so you just need to listen through the phone. And... and I'm doing that now. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Yeah. Council can hear you. Go ahead and speak. Okay, thanks very much. I um, really appreciate your time on the call today. Um, and for full transparency, uh, we were able to have two, have three conversations with um, with Mr. Newens, Mike Newens, and we really appreciate his transparency in, in our discussions. We had a we had a verbal discussion on March 10th, another one on March 29th, and then we actually met on site on, on Saturday, April 2nd. So again, we really appreciate his time. And also I wanted for full, again, for full transparency, um, we are the house immediately across Hare Road um, from this development. And we have a garage um, that was in uh, some of the pictures that Tamara had showed. Our, 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 our property has a detached garage that sits and a butt to uh, an easement um, just beyond the end of end of public road sign at the end of Hare Road. So I wanted to be completely transparent in that regard. Um, I think when uh, Councillor Fierro first started talking on the call a while ago, um, he, he really really uh, struck a chord with some of the things that I think concern us and have been echoed by the other two residents speaking on the call tonight, and that is is just the congestion that we are seeing at the end of Hare Road. And we really have a fear for fire safety um, going forward. You all recall the fire that we had in 2017. It was only by a stroke of luck that it didn't take out at least the four homes at the end of, at the end of Hare Road. Um, it was very close to property 205 at the end of, at, the, at exactly the end of the street. So. Um, you know, there's going to be an above ground uh, water um, uh, building. I think the gentleman described it to be about uh, a two to three meters square. I think we thought that was going to be underground. Um, so now we have that to, to navigate. Um, that, that hammerhead that uh, Mr. Miller described is getting very congested. And we see often the, uh, the, the, the garbage trucks that come down that street to pick up garbage for the four homes at the end of the road, he's having to go forward and backwards, forward and backwards, easily half a dozen times to navigate that corner. Um, I'm guessing a fire truck is a lot longer than a garbage truck. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I think it is. So we have some concerns with, with the congestion that's developing in, in that area. Um, the other point I wanted to raise is that as, as you consider this application, um, think of that disturbed area that Tamara talked about. Um, how would you view the application if it wasn't disturbed? Because that, disturb, that disturbance only happened because of some development immediately on the other side of Hare Road to fill in a, a big hole so another house could be developed. And that, 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 that disturbed area probably goes back uh, 15 17 years predates the time that we've owned on Hare Road since 2007. Um, so, so think about that. I, I don't know what your view of the application would be if it wasn't disturbed. I think there's a convenience that it's maybe disturbed and and maybe uh, maybe ignored. But I think there's some element of importance to think about that in that regard. And then the the final point I wanted to raise is 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 and I'm not a surveyor and I I, I need to place that first and foremost. There's some ambiguity of the surveys, and you know I think it's 
area was originally surveyed, let's say 110 years ago, um, uh, there's been some changes over time. And even when you look at the, at the city, the district of Lake Country map, the, the, the topos and whatnot, the, the boundaries overlap, houses, overlap, overlap actual houses. And so when you actually stand on the pin that is supposed to be our northeast corner of our property and you look south to the other pin at the edge of property 205, it takes out, it takes out some development that when I talked to the previous owner of the home and immediately next to me, um, he, he, he believes he built that on his property line. But if you're standing and eyeballing those two flags, um, it, 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 those, th that development falls on the eastern side of, of, of or I guess the, the far western edge of Mr. Newens property. So I, I, I think there's some ambiguity here that if the property pins were somehow um, reviewed, um, this setback could be very problematic. Um, and so those are the three issues I wanted to raise as you're considering this application. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, surveying is problematical in Okanagan Center. Um, somebody else online? We'll take first. Somebody's thank been you. holding. They have, uh, these are the two callers from uh, before, wish to comment again. This first one is John um, Miller. Reviewed. Um, this yes. John Miller, can you hear me? Yeah, we're still here. Okay, can you turn off the live feed in the background, please? Yeah. Okay, Thank go you ahead, you're much. live in Council Chambers. Uh, surveying is problematical in Okanagan Center. We um, need you to turn the live feed online. off in the background, okay. please. Mr. Miller? I'm here, yes. Can you please turn the live feed off in the background? Live feed is turned off. Okay, go ahead. You are live and you can speak to council. Uh, thank you very much. I would just like to address one of the issues that was received by one of the council or by one of the councillors. Um, it's the question of site disturbance with respect to the garage. Um, and I should point out that I am a geologist by training. I have a bachelor of science and a master's degree. I'm not a QEP because I'm not registered in this province. But if you look at the contours on that plot plan that was provided, you will see that there is approximately seven meters of elevation that will be disturbed. So we're talking digging out soil up to the order of 21, 22 feet. This is a significant excavation. This is not we're on flat land and we're trimming around the edges. They are digging away that slope. So whoever was at the site today and they saw the slope today, imagine going back six meters and having that slope be 22 meters high, or sorry, 22 feet high. That's what's going to be involved in doing that. So it is significant. I wanted to make sure that's correct. And to someone else's point, the elevations that were provided are actually incomplete and then if you look at them you will find there is no length and there is no width going on those diagrams they do not give you the length and width which i think is a major omission so going off the plot plan looking at those elevation contours they will do they will do seven meters of disturbance this is not a minor amount i just want to make a final comment thank you for thank help. you and the other one, second time around for the other holder. I actually have a new caller on the line who has not addressed council. I will put her through one moment. Thank you. Her name is Sharon Larva. Sharon, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. Okay, please make sure that all live feeds and electronic uh, viewing of the council meetings are turned off in the background. Okay, where do I do that though? Do I just turn the volume straight down to nothing? Sure, that will work. Okay. And just listen and speak through your phone to council and then you won't be responding to a 30 second delay. Okay. Okay, so you're live in council chambers so they can hear you if you'd like to go ahead. Yes, good evening. My name is Sharon Leiva. I live at 10774 Hare Road, which is one of the houses down the laneway at the end of Hare. 
Um, my concerns are in agreement with the directive and neighbors in that area. Um, I've been on here since 2008, and many times I've witnessed semi-trucks uh, with trailers coming up Hair Road and attempting to turn their uh, units around because they got stuck um, at Greymark Winery and they couldn't go down to the bottom of Okanagan Central Road West and they also couldn't back up, um, you know, up by the hairpin there on Camp Road. So I've seen these trucks that have had to have help to maneuver around into the hammerhead and then area where it's all under construction right now and it's been a real sore for trucks that get stuck in that position and that's where they have to turn around and the same goes for our snow plows in the winter time that nobody mentioned so if this was to go ahead um, we would need some type of a cul-de-sac built in there because there are vehicles and even the uh, campers you know people get lost uh, a lot of our winery business for Grey Monk, when they miss the turn off, they come down to Hare Road and they do make a, a turn in that area where it's all sandy and under construction. And if any of those vehicles were stuck while all of this construction is taking place right now with the water lines, um, they'd have to back up all the way down 6th Street, I guess, which is quite a steep in, in the confinement there. So I, I'm really, uh, I'm not for it either. And Again, if there was more vehicles that were going to park there in that area, trucks wouldn't be able to do the maneuvers that they need to. So I really don't think it's a great place to put a shop either. That's just my two cents. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak again. I was wondering whether I could prevail upon Tamara to show that ESA diagram there because between everybody's comments um, in terms of finding in another space there is an ESA 4 at the top of the property and looking at the site plan that is being used for or nearby is being used for a swimming pool so I'm assuming looking at the contour lines that's quite flat um, otherwise you wouldn't tend to put a swimming pool there so it's in that top that middle section, that pale yeah, colour there, which was also an ESA four. So, if we if we were considering, you know, some of the concerns that have been raised about the, the the closeness of it to the road, the the congestion and and the visibility of it, but equally taking on board the, the efforts that Mr. Newens and his son are making to minimise the disturbance of existing. Um, environmentally sensitive areas, which I, you know, which is has to be acknowledged, and I think that's that's very important. Is there an option, without causing this whole thing to go back to the starting block, and and making reports have to be run again? But is there an option to work with staff to see whether there is the possibility of relocating that garage up into that ESA four, um, which is to the west, middle west of the pro east of the property? Hmm. I just a thought I've never I haven't been up that far and maybe the applicant and is can speak to the feasibility of that but that to me would seem to fit the needs of the minimized disturbance which is obviously something that is in the OCP um, and as Tamara has pointed out is in the hillside um, development permit as well but also address the concerns that are being raised by the community um, around congestion and and visibility of the of of you know twelve hundred square foot of twenty two foot high garage. Very good. Uh, the applicant wants to address that. So I guess I get to take over now. Yeah. Um, we had an opportunity to, or I had an opportunity to meet with four of the councillors. Uh, maybe I'm only supposed to say three because I'm not <laughs> sure whether you're supposed to be out there with four of you um, this afternoon. And we kind of explored an opportunity to maybe move the garage. Um, you took the site plan off there, Tamara. Are you able to put that back up? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So it's it's 
So if you look at where we're proposing to put it now, if you kind of turn it around and actually put it, um, so the first corner was where we originally wanted it, but it encroached onto the ESA one area, right? So what we were thinking about is actually putting it over on the second corner, mm -hmm. with your cursor right there, but down a little bit below the corner and in the white area. So actually meeting the setbacks. No, not there. Not there. Opposite corner. Other, other side of the road. Yeah. yeah. Right. Flip it 180 no. degrees. Got to go up a little further and it'll it'll go into the other pink line there, which is the uh, water line that's coming up. So yeah, right in that spot there. That's kind of what we were looking at this afternoon when we were talking. Um, and unfortunately, like what what we didn't realize and uh, with all the hard work that your staff has done as well with our proposal um, that we were actually supposed to have 12 meters when we went forward with uh, we only got six meters of where it is actually now off of our property line, which the Again, the, the proposal right now is actually entirely on our property. It's not encroaching on property lines or anything other than the setbacks. So there is an option to potentially move it. Um, and it may actually, I heard some of the concerns of the neighbors that we're talking about, uh, in particular, Mr. Miller, about the issue about uh, cutting 20 some odd feet into the bank. If we did move it into that corner, um, it would actually minimize considerably the ground disturbance. And I think uh, with the councillors that were on site there this, this afternoon, that's kind of what we we explored, the potential of being able to do that. Um, we also kind of talked about, I think it was uh, Councillor Campbell that talked about potentially moving it up where the fire staging area is. Um, the concern then again is we have a septic field that's very close and we're trying to minimize the impacts in in that green area that's in between and in behind that that right there yeah so our natural kind of sense is to try and move it and flip it so that we would enter uh, the garage from the the corner instead of uh, um where it is now mm -hmm. all right that somewhat seems and like maybe what, just uh, before i finish um, option d is that but um we'll, we'll see carry on yeah like we were we were kind of when we first uh set it into that corner on the first corner going up there was about three feet of the garage that was actually going to be in the ASA one area. So I guess the biggest concern that came out of our environmental um, professional was that council wasn't going to actually even consider the garage being there because it was actually in that, in that ESA one area there. So that's why we actually pushed it down to the bottom there um, again with guidance from both your staff and from our uh, professional people that we hired. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor McKenzie, I got you. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. And and uh, thanks um, uh, the new ones for uh, being on the, on this call to uh, ask questions and um, being on site today. It was definitely nice for you to explain, um, you know, and go through the whole process. Uh, with us so uh, I do agree I think um, that would be my uh, favorite would be to see it on the corner above like you're suggesting um, you know it, it uh, didn't end up on the bottom because that was your first choice so um, I'm I'm uh, totally um, good with this proposal if we can move that to the top um, so now not having the exact location um, I, I'm not sure if we approve this with uh, a deferral back to staff to um, to uh, work on a final location for that. 
because I don't think that you should have to pay for um, two application fees along with the environmental studies and everything else. This should be a one a one time deal, seeing that you were working with us from the start. I so um, that would be that would be what I would uh, suggest. Um, and just a couple uh, notes there on some of the comments that we've been hearing. Um, when people are seeing um, people parking in that uh, area there, that was all councillors parking there. So <laughs> that's us not being from the neighbourhood parking where we probably shouldn't park because of that proposal. So um, um, just want to clarify that. And then I also uh, want to clarify that the fact um, where the um, building is on the bottom if there wasn't that step back on the actual property line, it would actually only be like a foot um, out of compliance from being allowed. So um, that's that's one thing that I noticed. And there's the other was the fact that um, a lot of the Nguyen's property is actually being used by the neighbors across the road. There's even um, a retaining wall that was placed in their property that is not from them. It's from the neighbors. So. Uh, I'm going to suggest that they're they're good neighbors to allow that stuff to happen. So uh, I don't think they're out to disrupt this neighborhood by any means. So I just want to give them kudos for actually wanting to be good neighbors in this in this case here. So I would um, I would be willing to um, motion uh, put a motion forward that yeah. uh, we we um, allow this except for moving that building and and that would be a deferral back to staff. I think I have to um, make sure all of the public have spoken that uh, at least once with regard to this application. So before I take a motion I and I have uh, three, four more counselors that uh, want to speak or three more. So anybody else from the public? I think we'll shut down public. Uh, I do have one caller, Carol Boyd, who has spoken already. But she is waiting on the line. Does she have new information or she just wants to reiterate what she said because we got to move on? Uh, I'm I'm not sure it wasn't clarified before yes. she parked. Well, let's let's hear from her then and uh, okay. Carol, are you there? Yes. Carol? Yes, I am. Okay, make sure and turn the live feed off in the background yep. and okay. please I'm present one last crack. Okay. Perfect. And you are live. You can present to council. They're looking for new okay. information. Great. OK, thank you very much for uh, I'm sorry. When I asked my question before, I thought I was going to have another chance to ask more questions. Otherwise, I wouldn't call back. Um, so with this change, uh, which I thank you and I approve of if he is to move that um, uh, garage workshop up further. But I just want to make sure my mine was never against Mike's property itself. It was more about the precedent. So I do want to just make sure everybody understands a few more things when we're talking about that six meter setback, what that could mean further down the road. And the two properties across from me actually are not that as steep, definitely not as steep as Mike's, but there is another one further down the road that you're going to have a very similar problem come up against. So my thing that I think everybody needs to realize, and Penny actually kind of did address it, is that my husband was a tradesman as well. We have a workshop. It is 12 meters back, by the way, but also his vehicle is 6.37 meters long. And in the tradesman community, that is pretty normal. So I know when I talked to Tamara, we talked about congestion, and I do recognize that people shouldn't have to worry about it when it's on, if they're parked on their own property. But the reality is we've all been to some of those 55 pluses where the trucks are actually sitting parked out on the road because we haven't left enough room. You. Uh, the, uh, the other item is that red uh, is the survey and I would say to Brian and everyone else around me because I have been a part of the uh, Okanagan Centre uh, debate about surveys. <laughs> unless they actually has a registered survey, I would say that I will not give up my spot unless it's so obvious that that is not my foot or two feet. Because gotcha. registered surveys is what we need. So okay. just to remind you, that, that one or two feet could make a huge difference if a vehicle is six feet long or, or six meters long. Very good. Thank you very much. All right, and I'll hear from Councillor Koza. Where are you at? 
There you are. Not, not me at all. I never had my hand up. That was a long time. You're ago. all done? Me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I have uh, Councillor uh, Scarrow and then Councillor Ireland, and then we'll wrap it. Councillor okay, Scarrow. I'll, yeah. I'll be really quick. Uh, my first question, I guess, is through to um, the planning department. Number one, if Mike decides to move his garage to where he has suggested is a second alternative spot, does he even need a variance? And if he doesn't, which I suspect is true, uh, will he have the ability to build his house uh, because he has every right to use his property to its capacity? Um, it seems to me if Mike decides to choose the second location for his garage that we're done here. OK, Tamara, thank you. Uh, Counselor Ireland. No, let Tamara answer my question. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. Great, thank you. Um, I um, thought it was rhetorical, but um, there carry you are, on. Um, your worship. Um, so the um, the development permit. So if he moves the um, accessory building to the location that we've been discussing, no variance would be required. But the plans would still need to be amended um, because a development permit is still required. So the, the development permit um, would, would need to be approved as well, um, and it would need to show an updated site plan with the new location. Um, and, and additionally, um, so in order to get that done, it would be what Councillor McKenzie has suggested, refer back to staff. Correct. Thank you. I would that's second Todd's motion, sir, while I'm here. That's option D. Yeah. Um, I would second that motion while while I'm here. OK, thank you. Councillor Ireland. Well, Bill, I put up my hand before you, so I, I'm seconding it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm taking, Not according I'm taking to my, my turn. No, 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 no. Let's get real here. Um, just just yeah, look at I, I appreciate the new ones. They've done more than most other people have done to try to satisfy everybody's wants and needs. So, um, you know, if, if we can move that garage in and and uh, and uh, get him on the way to building his house, I think that would be a good thing. So I would support that. And I, I do understand the people that live along Hair Road because I walk it all the time. Um, you know, this this is close to my where I live. And uh, I, I respect that most of the properties are set back fairly far, but in this case, if this had been a house, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know the little little mistake that we made, this house could be six meters from that road if this was a house. Mm -hmm. So any house along there in a new property could be six meters from the front, and, and I would say that could be problematic going forward. However, that's not what we're here to talk about, and uh, I, I fully support uh, approving the development permit and and uh, sending the sending uh, deferring the staff to change the location of the uh, the garage. Okay, then that's option D in a sense. So uh, it's to go back to staff to do that. Those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries. Unanimously, good on you, Councillor Cozy. <laughs> All right. Ah, thank you to the Newins for being there to answer questions. Thank you for planning to uh, all of those uh, con concerns were met, I would think. Um, next up, Councillor or Planner, <laughs> not Councillor Tomara. Uh, planner. Thank oh, you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think it's my oh, turn oh, now. Oh, it's gone to uh, manager. Is yes. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. okay. Let me uh, make, see if I can share my screen here. Cross your fingers for me. Uh, okay. Do you see the slideshow? We do. I we do. do. Perfect. OK. So good evening. Uh, we're here to discuss uh, a development permit. Interestingly enough, um, this is probably a good time to uh, make a small comment about uh, our process that we've got underway to consider a new uh, development approval procedures bylaw. 
certainly when I set out uh, to create this report for you, I had anticipated that we would be bringing forward the Lake Stone Master Plan and uh, variance permits um, concurrent with this development permit application, uh, feeling that it would probably give us the uh, best opportunity uh, to discuss the matter holistically. Unfortunately, um, for various reasons, we have not managed to advance that process. Um, and so we haven't uh, concluded our discussion on how uh, applications should be managed in terms of whether they should be done concurrently or in series and what kind of information that we should be requesting at each of those um, application times. So this is an example of a time when um, it would be beneficial to have a policy um, that speaks directly to how we intend to deal with these things um, in future. However, um, time is of the essence and the applicant requested that we proceed with at least the development permit at this time, given that the season, uh, construction season is coming upon us. And uh, so we need to, um, to hopefully get some movement um, or at, at least begin the discussion um, about this process and this project um, and the next step. So um, that being said, um, as I said, we're, we're going to consider the development permit for Hillside, the GHG reduction and resource conservation, stability, erosion and drainage hazard, natural environment and wildland fire hazard to allow land clearing and preliminary site grading in preparation for the next phase of the Lake Stone development, which is the summit phase intended to be 57 lots. A development variance permit will be considered um, as a separate application, uh, likely to vary retaining wall heights and um, perhaps design speed for the Hillside Collector Road once more detailed engineering information is available to support that information. So this evening, the essential question is to determine whether the development is proposed meets the established guidelines, most particularly with respect to the hillside development permit area. As you are aware, um, the other development permit areas are considered uh, delegated development permits, so they can be decided by staff. Um, but when there is a hillside development permit to be considered by council, we bring it together as a cohesive package and we create one document at this time. So the report here, as I say, addresses all of those things to provide that comprehensive picture uh, for your consideration, the land clearing and uh, preliminary site grading issues. So we may have uh, further considerations as we move through the process. You know, pardon me, I, part of my screen is hidden view here. Let's see if I can advance my slides. There we are. Okay, so proposed revisions to Lake Stone Master Plan resulting from more than about four years of discussions between the applicant and staff will be provided also in a separate report to Council in full recognition of the importance of moving a comprehensive process forward. As I just mentioned, um, time is of the essence, so we have um, not being able to advance the whole project. We're bringing this one application forward. The summit phase deals with about 21 or pardon me, 22.1 hectares or 54.8 acres of area in that area shown on the subject map, essentially. You'll have seen this before. It's part of the Lake Stone Master Plan. This is the phasing plan. So the summit subdivision will be accessed by the extension of Beacon Hill Drive. The conceptual layout and design were determined by the roads and servicing requirements which will include the construction of water reservoir at the summer and a water booster station and pressure pressure uh, pressure reducing valve prv now you know why they abbreviate it on tyndall road um, and in balance with the findings of the qualified environmental Prof professionals field survey um, showing where the environmentally sensitive areas were. So final um, design was influenced by that very thick 
um, environmental report that is attached um, to the development permit. So um, this will be the last phase to develop without a second primary access route to the to the south and or east. So this permit 2020-028 proposes works that include clearing, grubbing and earthworks on approximately 8.9 hectares or 22 acres to create 57 residential lots, making way for construction of roadways, including a main collector road and access to the reservoir to be authorized through the engineering design review process and a certificate to commence construction in due course and wildfire mitigation of parks and open space areas. The DP area guidelines checklists are provided in attachment B and I apologize very much. Um, the attachments are mislabeled uh, when uh, we reconfigured the report to remove the variances from the report. I failed to change the automatic um, uh, headers in the PDF document. So um, just when I thought I've got the hang of it, apparently I did not. So I apologize that they do show at the top of the page uh, attachment C, but I believe they are attachment B now to this report. So these uh, checklists were completed by the applicant and they're to basically demonstrate that the applicant has in fact considered all of the uh, guidelines, um, try to address whether they are applicable or not. Several of the guidelines are uh, applicable in some areas and not in other areas or will be um, applicable at the time of construction of the single family dwellings on the lots once they are created. So the, the guidelines are very high level and uh, so it is it is sometimes it is difficult to give a yes or no answer and so I think as part of our, our process, we may well have some conversations about how we might um, surface that information in future. So another learning um, opportunity for us here. However, um, several of the GHG reduction and resource conservation guidelines are, are more completely dealt with uh, certainly in the master plan document, both the 2012 version and the, the revised version that will come to you um, in the next many weeks. So as I mentioned at the onset, um, retaining wall heights uh, are expected to have to be dealt with. Obviously, uh, detailed design will bring more um, specific information. Um, I included in the report uh, a copy of the a plan that was provided. You will see there are a number of different lines shown on this map. The pink line shows the original layout proposed in the 2012 master plan. You'll note that those lots that called us that consent uh, coming off uh, the southern portion or pardon me, the western um, edge of the hairpin turn are no longer part of the plan. So that area is going to remain green space. The black lines that you see at the rear of those lots and partway through the center of lots uh, directly east um, along the next bend in the road, those are the areas where we're expecting that they will be retaining. And as I said, it will get uh, more specific numbers as the detailed engineering design comes forward. However, I wanted to provide that information for you. This is the route that was dis, um, determined uh, appropriate in the original master plan. Uh, and more detailed information available um, through LIDAR mapping um, has uh, meant that uh, the design has been altered somewhat. Um, so there, there are fewer lots in this, this phase than, than originally anticipated. Um, and for, for transparency, we want to recognize that yes, those, uh, those variances may well be required. Um, but at this point, um, we're just looking at uh, grubbing um, and preliminary land uh, grading. So you will note in the report, and this is a larger scale size for you, sort of trying to overlay the, the drawing on the ortho map. It's very difficult to see that 
um, ghosted in um, cul-de-sac that has been removed and now we just have uh, lots uh, fronting on on that hairpin turn. That hairpin turn is the uh, location of a potential second variance with respect to um, design speed uh, for the road. But again, more detailed design will um, give us the, the additional information we need um, to address that more particularly. So I have managed to talk beyond my slides. Let me catch up. Um, I've added a couple of slides in here to provide a little more detail, um, a closer up look at those proposed lots. Again, this preliminary conceptual um, grading plan shows the extent of potential um, uh, retaining walls. And obviously, uh, you know, this reflects the fact that the um, ground, in, this is the, of course the original ground shown here, so you can see very distinctly that summit um, that we're ascending as we take Beacon Hill Drive up, and you'll see that that uh, dark green shaded area, of course, is intended to be a park area that uh, houses the water reservoir and uh, likely will be um, used for a lot of trail purposes may not be as much active park space um, we'll be making some adjustments as we go forward in that in that regard however um, at this point uh, that is uh, the conceptual plan the red line that you see on this map is to show um, just that portion that is impacted um, by the development permit area for stability. Uh, this map, uh, second maps, shows uh, that the uh, lot 57 and a uh, portion of the next phase of development along Beacon Hill Drive are impacted um, by the uh, oops myself here the drainage corridor um, so there a portion of that lot is is impacted and so more detailed design at the time of subdivision will ensure that um, that is taken care of of course that is the owner extent of that area so so the schedule a to the permit contains the drainage review prepared by beacon geotechnical with respect to the impact of site grading on the existing natural drainage channel as identified by the dpa mapping uh, the review indicates the encroachment is limited and that the risks from a geotechnical perspective to the natural environment are below um, what is considered best practices and we will will be within um, acceptable area limits. Schedule B to the permit contains the drainage corridor development permit engineering assessment prepared by Alpine consultants to address potential disruption to the natural drainage flow and associated corridors. Um, it provides confirmation that the proposed subdivision layout and engineering design has been coordinated with the environmental professional and the geotechnical um, engineer. Of course, that's the kind of professional coordination that we're looking for as we move forward. So here again is more detail with respect to the uh, pink line being the outside edge of, of that uh, sensitive area. And you can see that there'll be some significant grading um, in the uh, adjacent property. Um, in due course. So this shows the Schedule C to the permit contains the environmental assessment and mitigation plan showing the uh, environmental sensitive areas. It was prepared by Ecoscape environmental consultants specifically for the summit phase. The report format and content are consistent with regional best practices and includes a thorough review of the proposed works an environmental assessment, an impact assessment, and recommendations for mitigation measures, environmental monitoring, restoration and performance bonding, and confirms the proposed subdivision layout has been informed by the findings of the field survey and the environmental sensitive area analysis. So this is consistent with uh, Council's recently adopted terms of reference. Existing terrestrial, riparian, and wetland resource values are identified and the potential for rare and or endangered species and habitats have been assessed. 
and the recommendations to maintain the natural integrity of the existing ecological communities through sensitive design are provided throughout the report and summarized in section four mitigation measures. This is figure five from the environmental assessment um, and it, it's contained, as I said, in schedule C to the development permit. This plan shows the limits of disturbance area with respect to both the cuts, which are the red lines and the fills, which are the green lines overlaid with respect to the environmentally sensitive areas, the ESA or two and three areas, of course, are a primary concern. So this plan shows um, that, and the QEP has advised uh, that the project will result in a loss of about 17% of ESA2, which is a high, uh, um, high environmentally sensitive area, and about 23% of ESA3, which is moderate with, within the project development area. So maintaining the bounds of the limit of disturbance area will be particularly important and is really the subject of um, this application to a large extent. If it's necessary to encroach outside of the area as defined, an amendment to the DP would be required. Schedule D contains the Mosaic Forest Management's Wildlife Threat Assessment conducted on April 31st, 2020. It describes the prescriptive measures for the area identified as the open area and parks lands that will in due course be dedicated to the district on subdivision. Um, so we see here uh, photographs from that area. Essentially, um, there's some mitigation work will be done um, to reduce the threat of wildfire hazard, etc. Schedule E contains that second report from Mosaic Forest Management confirming that wildfire mitigation has been completed on several lots uh, previously during uh, work conducted in phase five, which is uh, impacting another part of this phase. An environmental monitor must be retained by the developer and be present on site during construction activities to, uh, to guide and document compliance with best management practices, mitigation measures, and all other recommendations contained in the environmental report section 411 at their own cost. No formalized landscape plan is required as the extent of development is limited to clearing for lot and road construction within that defined limit of disturbance area we just discussed. So can a closer look at that in, in the uh, appendix. The primary concern is for restoration it involves returning exposed slopes back to their natural state by hydroseeding the cut and fill slopes with grass seed composed of 100% native grasses and approved by the QEP conducting monitoring prior to implementation. A substantial portion of the summit face will be provided to the district as park and open space, which will accommodate walking trails and a water reservoir near the summit, as you see on this plan. In due course, as uh, I have mentioned previously, a variance will be brought for Council's consideration to address any variances that are contemplated as part of the detailed in engineering and infrastructure design process. It is my understanding that we have received um, the erosion and sediment control plan as part of the 50% design submission and that we are expecting the detailed designs, 100% design submission um, very shortly, hopefully, in fact, by the end of the week. That detailed design will confirm the extent of any proposed retaining walls, so we'll be in a better position to address those through the variance. And obviously, the final subdivision plans must be approved by the approving officer and will um, certainly be dealing with those issues then. Uh, this is a very challenging environment. Uh, the topography is steep and uh, I think you can expect to see uh, a similar type of site grading as perhaps you've seen in um, previous phases. And um, as we as we broach the summit, um, we are dealing with some particularly challenging um, situations so uh, we'll see how that that comes out uh, in the detailed design so council has uh, several options um, of course you, you may uh, approve uh, the proposal uh, you may deny the proposal 
or you may defer the proposal um, pending additional information, perhaps that uh, detailed engineering or the uh, master plan have been suggested. Um, we did receive a comment or a question um, earlier today that I wanted to uh, address. Uh, so I've added this slide um, at, the, at the end of today uh, to, do, to address. Um, the concern was uh, the reallocation of density. We're losing lots in this particular phase. Um, where is the multifamily? Um, how, how has that changed through time? So I just uh, excerpt this is one of the tables that will be cons uh, will be included in that uh, consolidated revised master plan showing the the versions both the, the original 2006 version has evolved to the 2012 version and how uh, it is likely to evolve to the 2021 version. So you'll see that the Benchlands neighborhood, uh, that 80 unit short term rental condo apartment building that you approved last fall is showing up as part of that phase three and there were to be 91 single family homes for uh, 171 units. Then uh, when we move into the Highlands neighborhood, the sum, uh, summit phase, I believe, is part of that Highlands neighborhood, uh, the 395 single family homes. Of course, this is 57, but there will be townhomes and other multifamily units in this and subsequent phases, as you can see on this on this second slide. So as I say, I provide that information for your reference. I don't expect you to digest it all now, but wanted to make you aware that I do have it at the ready for you to consider um, should you desire. So um, Mr. Mayor, I believe that concludes my comments. The applicant <laughs> is available to answer council's questions if um, you choose to <coughs> hear from him. Um, and certainly I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. And uh, that's just the council has it. For the planet. Okay. Shall I end the slideshow, Mr. Mayor? Uh, or would we like to look at any of those slides again is all I'm wondering. Are you? Are you I can't. I don't know if I'm coming. I can hear an echo. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, well, I'm just wondering if if you wanted to look at any of the slides again, or shall I end the slideshow? Councillor Scarrow, do you have a want to see a slide, or you have a question? Or? Nobody's responding. No. Uh, I had a question. Bill, you're that, muted. Go uh, who? Corey, can you take down the slideshow? I think it's sure. difficult for my yes. maker to see us I have while a it's up. Well. Yes, it's very difficult, isn't it? Yeah, let me see what I can do here. I have a question, Mr. Mayor, as well. Yeah. A few questions. Okay. There we are. We're back. No, the slideshow is still up. Is it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me. There we go. One more. That's now it, any longer. Yeah. There we go. We're good? You can see me All now? Right. Um, <laughs> that, who, uh, Councillor Gamble had some questions. Councillor Gamble? Well, I, I wanted to make sure I, I hadn't missed Councillor Ireland's hand because he always says I take everybody else ahead of him. Well, you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, Councillor Gamble? Thanks. OK, I appreciate the presentation and uh, and the comments as well. Um, I I had marked a few things. Uh, of course, they're on this computer, so I've had to remember the things I had marked on the uh, on the uh, uh, application that was uh, that we read. Um, some of the things that I'm interested in finding out that I don't see in the report um, and I think need to be part of the master plan that is going to be uh, resubmitted. This is going to be the amended one, I'm assuming, uh, that um, that we have cost benefit numbers. In the original application many years ago, 
uh, it, there was excellent work done on the cost benefit numbers. I would like to see them updated um, and, uh, and presented to us. Um, the parkland, um, I have to say, I, I walked up there today. I, I just I just couldn't help it. It was such a beautiful day. And, um, and I actually thought I must be able to find the summit somewhere up there. So I walked for quite a while, got a phone call in between, which was good, and then made my way up to the top. And it was absolutely stunning up there. Uh, it, is, um, it is magnificent. And, um, and the, the best thing was that um, there were wildflowers blooming. The buttercups were actually out. Um, now, uh, I, when I look at the drawings, um, I see that there is a park area designated uh, and some of it seems to come down below. I'm not sure exactly how far it comes. It looks like at least, um, I don't know if it's 10 acres or 10, sorry, oh, sorry, uh, 10 hectares. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, no. There. Okay, that's gone. Oh, as much as I can get rid of it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyways, um, I wanted to know how big is the actual park at the summit area? It only looks about an acre, maybe acre and a half. That is flat. That is the flatter area. Then there is the surrounding area somewhat below. I had a hard time visualizing where those lots are actually proposed. And um, so it's very difficult for me without a bit more information on this um, as to where the lots are going to be, uh, how far below the summit uh, and how much fill there will be to make those lots somewhat level. I'm assuming when we're talking fill, you want to somehow make them level. Um, which, because it's very steep uh, going up to that summit, what will be the size of those retaining walls? I, I feel that that information is important in order for, for me to make an intelligent decision here. Gotcha, Jim. Um, and uh, so, you know, to me that, that needs to be, we need that information um, before we say yes to this. Um, and of course, I'm not a big fan of retaining walls. Uh, so how do how do we make those beautiful um, so that we don't make this absolutely magnificent spot ugly? We don't want to do that. And I'm sure the developer does not want to do that. I'm looking right right there at Don <laughs> Erdley, and I know that he's very big fan of of nature. So uh, that information is important. Um, I, uh, I also have concerns about uh, the roadway going up um, and I did start from the cul-de-sac that is, you know, or not cul-de-sac, but where that cul-de-sac kind of ends, where Beacon uh, Hill Drive stops. So that's where I started and I'm just wondering how that will sort of dovetail into the development. Maybe we can see that after when we look at the, the photographs again or the uh, diagrams again. Um, uh, some of the other concerns that, that I had were about the drainage issues. Um, I noticed there are quite a number, not just one, but a number of, um, you know, sort of canyons, I would almost call them, uh, you know, throughout this development on either side of the summit. And, uh, and so I'm just wondering um, how that will be impacted with the housing. Um, and, and so that that is something I, I would like to have um, discussed as well. Um, the big thing is the park. It looks like there are proposed two park areas, well, three by the picture, but um, are they going to be left natural? Is that the intent? Um, you know, in my opinion, you can't improve on nature it's so beautiful on its own uh, and so that is a big concern of mine are we going to blast it to uh, you know blast it and destroy that natural beauty how many trees are we going to retain in developing the roads 
uh, I would like to know how many trees will be removed and what we're going to do to uh, balance that um, so that we don't uh, cause more negative impact on climate change. Um, the other thing is um, the lots. How big are those lots? Um, and that relates to the filling. And then uh, I guess the last thing that, that I would like to have addressed is if we're losing 17% of high value environmental area, that's quite significant. After walking over it today, it becomes much more significant in my mind. Um, also, 23% uh, loss of the moderate environmental moderate environmental area. That's a total of 40% loss of environmental area. Um, where is that all going to be? I'm assuming it's mainly the roads and the lots. And how are we mitigating that? What is what is the balance? What is it that we're getting to balance that? You're going to get that, uh, Corey, or Don? Sure. Or? Let me let me give it uh, a first go, and then perhaps uh, okay. I'll okay. like to speak as well. So uh, I guess the, the numbers, you know, we, we start throwing numbers around. It gets quite difficult. Um, it, it's I would I would just say there is a very, very large area as part of this phase which will come um, to the district and will be preserved as natural area. The original plan um, was to have a more active park. I believe the more detailed design that is ongoing. Um, so our parks group has been discussing this with the developer in terms of what eventually will be developed there. Certainly we see walking trails um, and the reservoir site. There may not be as much active park area simply because we do want to preserve that. We may shift some of that um, purpose of some of that park area around um, to address uh, the land most appropriately. Um, but all of that is is all of that green area that you saw on that drawing would be natural area. So as much as you know, the math uh, shows which percentage of areas and whatnot. Um, I think you can agree that the well over half is is actually being preserved as natural area. Essentially, it is the route to get from the base of the hill up to the top to take us over to the the other side of of the summit for future phases. So. This is an integral piece um, to accessing future phases. Um, I'm not sure, Don. Do you have something that that perhaps you would like to add to to that for council's consideration? Sure, I, I can certainly speak to the to the parks issue. Um, everything on this plan that is green uh, is basically totally undisturbed. Penny, uh, there is not one tree taken out of any of that green space other than the access road to get up to the reservoir and the actual construction of the reservoir. The larger green area at the top, which will be called Beacon Hill Park, uh, will be a totally- Victoria map. already has that name. But. Yeah. Can, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that uh, Summit Park or Beacon Hill Park will be a totally natural park. There will be no trees taken off of it. It will be basically a trailhead for the entire Lakestone trail system that um, all the trails meet at that point. Our plan to this point, and we've been talking with the Parks Department, um, is to have a pavilion on top of the reservoir, a covered pavilion for hikers to uh, sit at picnic tables and to gather. Um, the reservoir will have an incredible view from uh, to the uh, southwest and the the uh, the reservoir is kind of situated to take advantage of that view. Uh, there will be a, a future washroom at the um, at the reservoir as well as a water fountain. But other than that, uh, nothing more than picnic tables, uh, benches, uh, waste cans, things like that. It's a totally natural park. 
The other um, three darker green spaces are also natural parks, but somewhat developed in that they will have uh, benches and tables possibly uh, to for hikers to stop at along the way. And then the lighter green area is all natural green space and totally undisturbed. So uh, to answer your question, there'll be no trees coming off of any of the green space other than the access road and the reservoir itself. Uh, can you mention, can you tell us how large an area that will be? Well, the, the whole green space is, is really hard for me to determine. Like when you see, when you look at uh, Beacon Hill Park, it's a different color, <clears throat> but it all blends together. Um, it's not a, actually the whole thing is not developed. So uh, it, it could all be the same color and you, you would know where, where Beacon Park ends and the natural space begins. Uh, so we have to define it somehow on this drawing, but I, I can't tell you exactly what the acres are, but it's it's over 50% of the summit phase will be left in its natural state. Okay, and thanks. If, yeah. if I could just add one more thing, if you don't mind. Um, currently, Lake Stone is at a, a complete standstill as far as development. We are totally sold out of uh, phase four and 5.1. Um, this is the next phase that gets us over top uh, of the hill. Uh, and I just want to make a, one comment about Beacon Hill Drive and, and the lots fronting it. Uh, is is this, this is the exact um, route uh, as shown in the 2012 master plan. And it is the route that we have to take. Uh, it's the only way I can get from phase 5.1 to the summit and maintain grades that meet the servicing bylaw. Uh, we could change the, the, the location of the road, maybe take the hairpin out, but then I would be coming back to you with a variance for uh, grading of the roads, which is the worst thing you could have on a hillside. So um, the, the Beacon Hill Drive is, is something that I can't come back with a different route. It's the only route that I can take to get from phase 5.1 to the summit. Um, we, we talked a lot about retaining walls and that's going to be coming to you in a separate application, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have retaining. Uh, well, to I, walls. I did I did ask those questions and I'm sure everybody is interested in hearing um, how much. Uh, well, first of all, how large are the lots approximately in size and then how much fill would there be on those lots? I'm assuming fill because it's very steep and and how far, you know, if you're standing up on that tabletop, the summit, and you look over the side, like where are the lots going to be? How far down? If, you, if you're standing on the summit, on top of the summit, you won't be able to see the lots. The lots are well below the summit. Like when okay. you come up to the top of Beacon Hill Drive, there'll be an access road up to the summit. And that access road is about 130 meters long and at a 12% grade. So. The, the actual summit is way above the lot. That makes me feel way, way better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Size the, lot, okay. uh, the, the lots are sized typical to what all the lots have been at, at Lakestone. Uh, typically about 60 uh, feet wide by about 120 feet deep. Um, you'll notice, uh, I don't know, Corey, if you could put up the limit of disturbance drawing. Um, but to talk about cuts and fills, um, being that Beacon Hill Drive has to be a steady climb uh, all the way from the bottom to the top. Um, the engineers are telling me that this phase is a, a neutral cut fill balance. In other words, wherever we're making cuts, uh, the land will be used to fill and there'll be no material brought on or taken off of the site. Um, so if you look at that drawing that uh, Corey has up there, you'll see the outline of the lots is sometimes in green and sometimes in red. And where you see a red line, that means it's a, at a cut and where the green lines are is at a fill scenario. And the only places we have retaining walls are shown on the previous drawing uh, and are required uh, to actually build Beacon Hill Drive as well as to build some of the lots. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Reed. 
thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and thank you, Corey, for the presentation, um, and thank you, Don, for your comments. Um, I, I was kind of, I sent an email uh, late on Thursday night, and I was hoping to get some answers to that um, in the presentation to save me going through and asking all the questions. So um, I think I got one thing uh, clarified, which I appreciate on the number of units, but everything else is kind of still unanswered. So, um, and I think the point we I was trying to raise is the um, confusion around the DPs and um, the the lack of clarity on them. Um, you know, uh, I, I know you've mentioned that in some cases it's it's an and and or an and or, but that doesn't give me any information at all. Um, you know, if, for example, are the roofs south facing? Yes, no, both of them are ticked. Does that mean there's one south facing roof or there are 99 face south facing roofs? 99% of them are south facing. So I think from my point of view, my job as I understand it is to assess whether the majority of the DP requirements have been met. And currently, as it's presented in the report, I, I don't have that information. For example, you know, there's 205 pages which we have read on bat boxes and herpetological fauna. But there's no information about how that is going to be implemented in this development. It doesn't tell us one t amount of how many bo bo bat boxes are going to be put up there, or is there going to be a single lizard slash snake crossing? But we have 200 pages on telling us how important that is. So, um, I'm 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 struggling at this stage with the information in this report to make a decision, and um, you know I don't want to take up a amount of time because you've talked a lot about this, but we've just spent an awful lot of time discussing a garage on ESA four um, land, and yet we've got here uh, forty percent of the development seeming to just go through ESA two or three. Um, so. Um, it just seems a little bit of a mismatch there. So, um, you know, I, I would really like to see the new Lakestone master plan and the variances. Um, so um, for me, I, I can't make a decision. I appreciate the work's been done to date, but to me, it's incomplete for me to be able to make a decision. So um, those would be my points without going in line by line and asking for clarification. And I think that's something that can be done offline with the applicant to give us the information that certainly I need um, to make a decision on this. OK, thank you. Um, Corey, did you want to respond? Yes, Mr. Mayor, sorry, uh, Councillor Reid. Um, uh, yes, I, I tried to address the fact that um, you know, many of the guidelines are difficult to speak to and the fact that we're focusing on Council's decision about the hillside development guideline. So in fact, as much as it's lovely um, and we provided the comprehensive information package so that you have all the information available to you, um, our primary concern at the moment is, is focusing Council's decision on the hillside uh, development permit area guidelines. And as you said, it, it, it's difficult in some places, um, lot grading or the the plans um, allow rock faces to be used. Um, in other locations, it will be necessary, in fact, to use retaining walls. Um, most of those retaining walls, of course, at the rear of lots or shielded quite a bit by that natural open area. Um, however, um, it is difficult to to be really specific um, with with each of those when they're very high level and there's multiple answers to the same question. Absolutely, I understand um, and I had worked extensively on the master plan update for the very reason that I knew you would be interested in that updated information and we look forward to bringing that to you. Um, and hopefully it will answer a whole bunch of those questions for you. The development permit document uh, attaches that environmental report and the terms and conditions are necessarily require the recommendations contained in the report to be applied as they move forward. And um, many of those things will come through that detailed design. 
um, for example, uh, wildlife underpasses or corridors, those kinds of things. We'll look at that through the subdivision um, aspect, um, as well as the road design. If there needs to be culverts or anything of that nature, we'll work that in as part of that discussion. So but I we're trying come, to slice the plot a bit here. That one point about putting it in at subdivision. Damage is done. We're about to do site clearance of trees of ground in the middle of the bird nesting season when all the little lizards and snakes are coming out after the winter and making more baby lizards and snakes so to do that at subdivision doesn't speak to the very information that is in that environmental report which says take care of the little critters as soon as you can and give them a place to go well there won't be any little critters left because we're taking the trees down and we're bulldozing large sections of the property at precisely the wrong time. So, you know, for future generations, should they ever come back and recover from this, their subdivision might be the time to consider it. But for these now, this is the time to consider it. So I don't think it can just be pushed off to the side and said, well, that's something for later. I think there's a reason why these things are are considered at this stage as well so and the hillside permit i mean we can go through it but it doesn't things are ticked as na that i feel should be answered and there's no explanation given as to why things are yes and no so i don't think just ticking the box and then leaving it without any explanation as to how you can have a yes or no is really good enough for for council to make a decision that's i i can't i can't okay um do you want to respond to that don yeah, as far as the environmental goes, everything that we do, every step that we take up there is under supervision of our environmental consultant. We would never go onto a property during the time when prior to the bird survey being uh, done. There's a date set for that when you can or cannot develop. Uh, and that bird survey date is coming up later in April, I believe. If, if we do uh, develop beyond that date, obviously the environmental consultants are are with us every step of the way. It's listed in this development permit. And it's listed in the environmental report. So we we are not doing anything uh, to to hurt any animals, uh, and uh, you know we have to trust the the professionals uh, to to watch us do our work and and to do it right. And we've always done it right. So Don, how many bat boxes have been put up in the rest of the development? How many are going to be put up? No, how many have? Because they finished. So There's been no bat boxes required up until this time. There's bat boxes required in the environmental report that you will see in the new master plan. And there's whatever the requirements are in this phase, you will see everything that's that's asked of us in this environmental report. But there's there's none put up so far because there's been none required. Because the actual report references the requirements for bat boxes and herpetological tunnels in the first master plan. That's why I asked. So it doesn't give us any detail in here of what's going to go up, but it does reference in one line, see the original master plan for how this is going to be implemented. But so that so and so have there been any um, herpet, herpetofauna tunnels built in the, any of the other developments? So that we, we, this is the first time now we start to climb the hill up into the highlands. So there's been no requirement of any environmental um, monitoring up till this point. But starting with this phase, the environmental consultant will be with us every step of the way. So if whatever they are asking for in their assessment uh, will be done at their request and when they request it. Uh, we can't I can't answer all your questions on this, but the we hire professionals to tell us what to do. And that report is is in this in this report. Um, I don't know what else I can say about that other than we have to trust the environmental professionals to tell us what to do. So there's so there's no environmental need for any bat boxes or any lizard or snake habitat in any of the other developments that have taken place anywhere on Lake Stone to this date. Not to, not to this date. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
there were sensitive areas at the lower air elevation as well. Are you saying some of those sensitive areas are not protected? Well, they're, they're certainly protected. Like in phase 5.1, there's the wetlands uh, at the top of phase 5.1. Yes. That's protected. That was environmentally monitored. But there was no requirement for us to put any bath boxes in there. It seems to be. It was left totally natural. We walked that many, many years ago um, with, for that very reason that it was a wetland and a sensitive area that was to be protected. That, that was going to be my question because there's rubber boa in the area too. And they're, they're, if they're not uh, on the listed uh, uh, list, they should be because they uh, are quite rare but and uh, only occur in in particular habitat, but so, um, Corey, did you want to respond to that? Yes, I, if I may just <coughs> make one comment, um, Mr. Mayor, I, I think that, um, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before, we have an evolution of a project. Um, when it was originally conceived and the first master plan in 2006 was put in place, there were quite different norms um, yes. in terms of what expectations were for environmental preservation. Um, since that time, we've seen a lot of changes to both uh, provincial and federal legislation when it comes to the protection of the environment. And so, of course, the environmental reports also evolve and consider those things more fully than perhaps they did previously. It's not to say that maybe it wouldn't have been a good idea in the past, but it wasn't something that was brought up. And so it is being brought up now. And so it's being dealt with now. OK, good. I'll move on to Councillor Scarrow. Wherever you are. Uh, I'm here. Yeah, I, good. I, I didn't have a question. I didn't put my hand up. But I've been very interested in listening to the conversation and I share Kara's concern about the animals, but I also understand that, um, y y you know, y y you have to go with what the environmental experts say. So I understand that this is a large part of the development scene in Lake Country. And I understand that this is the only road or the only pathway for Don and his development to reach the lands uh, on the other side of, of, of the summit. Eh? So I want to bring the debate back to the hillside question that we're asking today and not worry so much about the detail down the road because the details unknown at this point from what uh, Corey has said to us. There's many answers to the same question. So we need to answer those questions when the question arises and when the answers are evident. I also agree, Cara, don't shake your head. I also agree that the process is flawed because Don and his big cats and big shovels and diggers, as you call them, is going to make a mess before we have an opportunity to, to, to correct it. And I, I wouldn't like to say that's the way it is, but unfortunately with municipal politics and how development occurs, we only have certain opportunities to comment on a development and this is kind of how the province and the municipalities have done it. It's not perfect, nothing's perfect, but uh, I'm prepared to let Don go forward with his request uh, when that debate is completed. I have okay. no questions. Thank you. Um, Councillor Cozo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Don, for being here and taking our questions and uh, listening to us and uh, appeasing us. Um, I just want to say that uh, I, I would like to see uh, the tree bylaw, the tree vegetation bylaw uh, instituted on this, but uh, I don't think we're quite there yet, uh, which is something that we've been council has been pushing for and pushing for. And I just wanted to bring that up as a first topic, kind of hint, hint, nudge, nudge that we got to get moving along on this. I know we have a lot of other things, but this is the perfect prime example of why and when we need this. Uh, and I know that, Don, you have all your qualified professionals and everything like that. I'm a water technologist guy, so I kind of understand the world. But uh, I got to tell you, when I went over to Benchlands and, and seen what happened there, when every last tree was taken out and the earth was removed back down to the barren 
rock and then we had floods there that was no one's fault uh it didn't sit well with me and it still doesn't to this day and i don't want to see that happen again and i think that's what that's what councillor reed is kind of uh, alluding to is that you know we don't want to go in there and remove everything and then have another bench lands again is what my concern is so i just wanted to start with that uh when I looked at it at first, I didn't like the hairpin curve because I never like hairpins. Uh, coming from a truck driving family and spending lots of time in a rig, I got to say that hairpins are no fun for tractor trailer drivers. But uh, as well in saying that, I was thinking that maybe you could remove that hairpin, like you said, but then you'd have to go with a grade. So what's the worst of two evils? But I just, I, when I look at that hairpin, I don't like what I see. But as you've alluded to, you know, maybe that is our only option. And then the other final last thing I wanted to say is that uh, it's easy just by looking at the, uh, the, the report and on page uh, 30, it shows the lots and lot 35, 36 and 37, the elevation gain on that retaining wall and it says retaining wall height to be determined. But just by looking at the contours, that's gonna be a 26 foot retaining wall in that location. And, and I don't like that either and or, the fact that we might have to put in a few retaining walls to get to that elevation so i don't like seeing that either so it, my, my recommendation is going to be to, to turn this right back around and that's where i'm going to stand on that thank you okay, thank you uh councilor mckenzie thank you mr mayor i think uh, don wanted to respond to uh um jeremy's um so i'll let him respond first and then i'll say my piece okay i didn't hey. see your hand don sorry go ahead that's Thanks. Um, as far as the cuts and fills, um, as you know, we have to climb from the very bottom to the very top and we have to maintain that exact grade all the way. Uh, so, um, you know, cuts and fills uh, are necessary to get there. When we get to the hairpin corner, um, we did a layout and possibly Corey could put it up uh, again. Uh, we, we, we tried to design the phase the way the original master plan had it with a cul-de-sac coming off of that hairpin where there's, uh, I believe it was uh, 14 lots in total. And um, and when we looked at that, um, that those 14 lots would have required a, a massive amount of retaining walls. And one of the retaining walls it would have required, uh, Corey, there's another, that's the one, if you, the one just below that, that one, yes. So uh, it, there's another page to that one, uh, Corey. Do you have th that one right there? So when we first started designing the summit phase, the master plan basically allowed for that cul-de-sac to come off of that hairpin. And you can see the black lines of all the retaining walls that would have been required to put in those lots. And uh, trust me, it hurt me a lot to get rid of those lots because there are prime lots or prime view lots. But you'll notice one wall in particular in that drawing, and that's the one that's actually holding up Beacon Hill Drive. Uh, so, Corey, if you flash to the next page now. That one, you'll see that we got rid of the cul-de-sac and we just put lots along the hairpin. And that retaining wall uh, holding up those lots is the exact same retaining wall that we would need to hold up the road. Uh, so we managed to lose 50% of our lots, uh, but the retaining wall required to hold up the road has not changed from holding up the road or holding up these lots. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we, you know, we've done everything in our power to, uh, you know, reduce the amount of retaining walls. But the one thing that Lakestone has done a really good job of is um, is the retaining walls. We've made sure that they're, they, they, they match the terrain, they don't stick out like a sore thumb. And Corey, if you could just pop up that uh, top drawing again, the limit of disturbance drawing. Oh, this one? Um, yeah, sure, for example, that one right there. So if you look at the bottom of phase four, <laughs> It comes off of Tyndall Road into the Highlands. I think Corey's trying to make it bigger. Yeah, oh, wow. right. 
That Three hairpin, here. that hairpin there is exactly the same uh, hairpin that we're putting in. Or, or I shouldn't say exactly the same, but the the exact same design speed that we're putting in in the summit phase. And everybody asked me why we put that hairpin in phase four. We actually took the hairpin into the corner of the of the talus slope and have to build a big retaining wall. And the reason we have to do it in phase four is again to get the grades uh, to meet the bylaw to get up the hill. And so that that particular hairpin corner is built, is existing, is all speed zoned already and functioning just great. So what we're asking for in the summit phase is, is almost identical to that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Councillor no. Ireland. No, sorry, now you missed me. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I crossed so, it off as soon as you, you got keep back. Going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, um, I, I'll uh, say um, thanks for being on here, Don, um, and thanks for answering questions. Um, I'm not quite sure why we haven't uh, updated the Lakestone Master Plan. Um, you know, we've had plenty of time to do this and we've talked about it, but it's not been done. Uh, this would have been um, really nice to have done this before. Um, same as the tree bylaw. You got a whole pile of things that um, should have been done before this uh, and then would make this a lot easier for us to be comfortable with because you know, a couple of things I'm not comfortable with is getting a report this size, you know, right before the long weekend. And uh, it's a lot to digest. And there's a lot in here that I have questions with as well. And looking at retaining walls that are 25 feet high, uh, I, I'm definitely not a fan of uh, retaining walls like that. Um, so, and then the other thing was when I started on council was one of the first things I walked into was um, the moonscape that uh, that was uh, on benchlands. That was uh, an environmental disaster in my in in my um, personal opinion. Um, I, I I was absolutely um, appalled to walk into that. So there was not um, you would have trouble finding bugs out there, let alone any animals. So that was not done right. Um, and, and again, you know, I get it that the rules were done differently then. But that, that there was um, something there that I would not want to have tagged with my name by any means. So um, the fact that, uh, um, you know, when I first sat up there, um, I can remember standing there with Councillor Ireland and we're looking at a big pool of water in a perfectly dry thing and it's running over the edge. And we both looked at each other and I said, this is going to wash out that road down below you could tell that when you make a giant parking lot and have nothing left there that you're going to have problems. So I get it that, you know, we've tried to improve and we're trying to get better on this. Um, but I look at this here and us going up that, uh, you know, to where we're going there. And it would be really nice to have this, um, to be able to do this after we have uh, an update of that master plan. Um, so uh, right now I'm I am not comfortable in uh, approving this personally. Um, at this point, I would like to see it go after the fact, um, at least be delayed enough to digest some of this that's going on. So that's where I'm sitting personally right now. Um, and uh, like I say, I echo some of the, the comments that uh, Councillor Reed and Councillor Kozub have, uh, have already said there. Thank you. Now, Councillor Ireland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, uh, look, at I've got, uh, you know, I live in the neighborhood. I, I go up and drive through it every day. Um, I, I would like to see this be the best and as good as it possibly can be. And uh, for that, I, I do agree with Councillor Reed that we, there's a lot of questions that we have that I think we want answers to. Um, you know, reading through that DP thing, I, I get, you know, it might be okay for you guys to accept yes and no, yes and no, yes and no, but then I have to think about, okay, why is the yes, why is the no for each one of those things? In every past report from a DP we've ever had, there's been a footnote explaining why it was a no or why it was a not applicable, right? 
like Dawn's answer, and Dawn, thanks. You've answered a lot of questions that were important, um, you know, because we had this massive environmental report talking about frogs, snakes, and and bats, and uh, but no commitments in there, right? And you know, it wasn't even quite clear in the uh, in the ecoscape report whether those things were really going to happen or not. And in fact, it's not really clear in the report from ecoscape. You know, it just says. We recommend there should be an environmental monitor. You know, the third time I read it, I, I finally found a spot that said they're going to have an environmental monitor. So, yeah, you know, I, I'd like lots of questions answered, but, you know, I, I appreciate that uh, sooner or later this is going to go ahead. But, you know, the, I would like to see the variances with it, the retaining walls. I, I think, you know, for me, that's what's most important to see. Um, you know, there's lots of other things I disagree with, uh, you know, in the statements that are made, you know, in, in one of your statements, uh, maybe you could answer this for me, that there's going to be a convenience commercial space. Well, is that only the space that's in the hotel or is there actually convenience commercial space available someplace in Lakestone in the future? Because in our talking about it, right, you know, where, where we talk about greenhouse gas and we're, we're, you know, this nice walkable community. Well, it's not a walkable community because you've actually increased traffic to the downtown area in, an, in a situation where we have no control over the crossing of it. We have no servicing on this side of the highway. On the west side of the highway, there is no services, zero. So, you know, we're fighting with the province and the Ministry of Highways to keep our connection to that other side, but we're not winning. We're not getting anywhere. The province doesn't give a crap. And and highways, they'd love us to, to cancel all those connections and make it 90 kilometers an hour. So that whole greenhouse gas sort of thing, you know, I, I don't think it should really be there. And I, I, But at the end of the day, if we're going to go back to what we're talking about, I would like to defer till we get the variances. Uh, that's what I would like to see. And some of those questions answered there. I got I, you. I, you know, that could come back at the very next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, I got um, Councillor Reid again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I support everything I've heard today from the councillors. And to speak to Councillor Scarrow's comments about about the timings of things and and we, what we're working with. I suppose what I'm thinking of is that when we if we approve this without seeing the variances, then Don is going to have to go ahead and make the cuts and do the work on the basis that all the variances get approved because it's being constructed as if the variances were already there. So it then means that all that work has been done and we come and counsel and we can't really assess the variances with a completely open mind because the work's already been done. Um, so that's why I would I would support seeing it all together. It's not to say no, there's no development by any, by any stretch of the imagination. It's just to get a clear picture of everything at the same time so we know what we're talking about. If we look at things like retaining walls and some of the developments we've done recently, just in the last, well, since I've been on council, you know, we've moved away from that hard concrete block approach and looking at green retaining walls and and to, to maybe assume, and the report assumes it's all going to be as is, as was back in 2006. We can't keep doing what we do in 2006 we're in 2021 in the middle of a climate crisis so we need to to make sure that what we're building today reflects where we are today and i suppose by by assuming that things are going to be as they were back in 2006 we're, we're losing an opportunity there to really um improve the environment and i completely agree i think it was councillor arlen that. said you wanted this to be the best we can be and and that's mm. i think where everybody's coming from the same position Okay, Don, you respond, then I'll get yeah. out Gamble. As far, as far as the master plan goes, we've been trying for almost four years to get this to you. It's been a, a massive struggle for us. We've spent over a quarter of a million dollars on consultants and reports and looking at the drawings that you're looking at here of the, of the future master plan, and I just can't seem to get it to the finish line. Uh, 
I, I really uh, compliment Corey on, on what she's done here on this report and the work she's done on the master plan since she's been here. It's, uh, it's moved forward uh, leaps and bounds in the last few months, but we just can't seem to get to the finish line. As far as McGowan Development Corporation is concerned, the master plan is finished. It's written, it's been reviewed, it's had input from uh, all members of staff. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, you know, things change. New people come on and have new ideas and we're open to that. But we, we just, I just can't seem to get it to the finish line. Right now on any given day, if you drive out to Lakestone, you, we have over a hundred people a day working on this site. We're a driving force in this community. We have been in, in you know, for 17 years in, in Lake Country. And right now this development is at a complete standstill. Um, without, without us being able to move forward with this phase, uh, everything, everything comes to a grinding halt. Um, we want this master plan in front of you in the worst way, but I, I just, I'm struggling to get it done. And um, as far as the retaining walls, you could ask me any question you want right now on the retaining walls, but the variance application that's going to come to you is the application that you already have. The variance, uh, the retaining walls are, are written in this report. They're shown, the location is shown. Uh, we know the block that they're going to be made out of. We have a rendering of what that wall on the hairpin is going to look like from down below. We've done all the work and those retaining walls are required. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gamble. Um, and, you know, I know you have questions about uh, why are they so tall and why are they not tiered in, in smaller... And, you know, we, we do our best. We have to get these retaining walls on private land and not on district land. And when you have retaining walls holding up roads and lots, you can't tear them uh, down because now they start ending up in your natural green space that we've promised to dedicate to you in the master plan. So we can't move them up the hill in tiers because then the geo grid ends up in the roads and in the building lots. <coughs> and so it's really unfortunate, but this is the last phase that actually gets us to the summit. And once we get up to the summit, I'm not saying there's not gonna be more retaining walls, but this is, the walls are required in this phase to get us from point A to point B. And without moving up this hill, uh, this economic driver in, in Lake Country is at a total standstill. Okay, I got to Councillor, uh, but I have Councillor Gamble and then Councillor Ireland. Okay, thanks. Uh, so really appreciate the discussion. Uh, and and I, I do understand, you know, where you're coming from, Don. But I think, you know, you have to realize that, that we are elected representatives for the community and it's our job to represent the community as best we can. Um, and, and so I think we are responsible to ensure that we do receive gotcha, the information Bill. that we feel we need to make intelligent decisions. And that's all it's about, is not anything else. I know that you work very hard. And, and try to do your very best. So I'm not, that. that's nothing to do with that at all. But but um, I, I too support deferring this uh, until we get answers from my perspective. I want to see uh, the drainage concerns addressed adequately, including how they integrate with the full development of Lake Stone. Because drainage isn't just the summit of this little area. It's all of Lake Stone. And that's that's part of why we're asking for that updated master plan. I don't know why it's so difficult, but it needs to be presented to us so that we know what we're dealing with. Um, the other thing is um, we need the height of the retaining walls proposed. And I guess you know, we've heard the request to have the variances submitted that I would agree with would be very helpful so that we know actually what we're saying yes to. We, we get a lot of complaints from people in the community about different things. This is an economic driver. There are a lot of pluses here, um, you know, so I mean, that is true, but we still need to know what we're making decisions on. 
and not make a decision and then come back and say, oh, why didn't we know that? That's that's backwards. We can't do that. And I'm not saying we haven't done it. We have done it. And I think we're trying to not do those things again, to be a little more intelligent in our decision making. The other thing is the third thing uh, is the uh, second fire access uh, needs to be clarified. Uh, if we are talking about extending this road, if this is a long roundabout road, where is that access going to be? When is that going to be in place? If we're selling lots and people are building houses, we don't want to put them in danger. Um, so I, I, I would like an answer to that in the submission. Um, and then um, uh, and then the other thing is the the updated master plan. That's the thing that to me is key um, for making the decision and knowing where we're going, because this is, as you said, I mean, this is very important because you said that we need this road with its switchbacks and a gradual slope. I walked up there today. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, and and then to get up to the lands beyond to get to the highlands south. I think that's what you're talking about. Is that correct? Yes. So, you know, those are things we need to understand how that's going to work and how it's going to be made fire safe for the people that live there. And, and you know, any kind of emergency. <laughs> How do you get out of there? You need a second access. We have lived with people complaining and complaining about Copper Hill and, you know, over on uh, above Lodge Road, where it is a tiny subdivision in comparison, a tiny subdivision and very close. But this is not. I mean, this is is quite a quite a, a little hike to get up there. So, uh, you know, I, I think you've really done some good work here. It's just that I think we need this information. And I think we'd be much better prepared to make a good decision and feel we can answer to the community for that. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Aaron. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, for me, you know, like Don, I, I think you probably know the height of these retaining walls. And I, and I think that, you know, whilst maybe the variances weren't through, but if we had been, you know, if if all the heights and of all gotcha. those retaining walls and all gotcha. those things were clear in this report, then we'd know what we're getting into. And I think you know these, but we're not, we don't know them. So we, we can't go there. Um, for me, I, I don't, I don't necessarily need to see the, entire master plan but i need to see the the uh you know some of the questions penny asked were, were pretty key the uh the fire protection the drainage as well um I'll, I'll ask you one question right now that you might be able to answer for me the drainage this drainage does all this drainage flow to the west or does it some of it flow to the east uh, all the stormwater comes from the summit down through phase four and 5.1 okay and through the detention tanks at Kendall Road. Yeah. And are, are we completely solved on the issues that were caused in those detention ponds and the floods that we've had? Yeah, so this has been an ongoing thing uh, with the engineering department. They've been working with us to yeah. uh, come up with the design. We, we have the final design uh, being submitted this week for an improvement to the outfall down at Okanagan Lake. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so it, this has been a, you know, a two year back and forth with the engineering department who have cooperated with us and and we're there now. And so those remedies will be done over the of course of the next month or so. Um, uh, yeah, you're, uh, the answer to your question is yes, we do know how high the retaining walls are. Um, and, uh, you know, I can provide that information at, at any time. Yeah. I have I have one question for so there's been a lot of questions asked. Will will all the councillors be submitting their questions that, or how do I how do I know which questions you want answered prior to the next go around on this? Well, I, I, I can't answer that. Everybody answers. Staff, so I, staff. I think that 
I mean, it's got to be a consensus. We've got to decide together, right? Um, I'm just saying that for me, the, the variances, uh, Penny's conversations about stormwater and fire protection, that's very important, um, I believe. Uh, I don't know if I need to see the entire full master plan completed because uh, I just don't know how far away it is. And, and I, I can appreciate that it's, that it's us as well as you, it's a, what's delaying this is, is the both of us taking time to get it done, right? I can appreciate that. And maybe, maybe it can't happen before this starts, but having the answers to those DP questions and what variances are going to be coming forward, um, you know, those things for me go a long ways to, to saying, okay, well, we can get this done. If I could just make one quick comment, um, it was always agreed to by staff and by McDonald Development Corporation that uh, the summit phase would be the last phase to be developed prior to another exit or prior to the new master plan being adopted. As far as fire for this particular phase, uh, all traffic will be funneled uh, down to Tyndall Road, but the long road access is a fire escape. Um, and so that is there now. It's bulleted off with keys. The fire department has keys to the to the bullard. So that is the fire escape for this phase. Uh, after this phase, before we go any deeper into the highlands, it is our full intent once the master plan is approved to start developing from the east side and work back towards the summit phase to connect everything from that way. So the distance traveled for emergencies um, is, remains spiked low. So that is, that is our plan. Well, that, I mean, that's a great answer. Just before I, I lose the floor here, I had one more question. Um, in the uh, Ecoscape report, I got you, there's a number of trees that are supposed to remain. At least that's what it shows. You know, not very many, but some of those trees are in the public realm. Some of those trees are on lots or some of them are right on the border of somebody's lot where somebody's liable to go and take a chance on cut it down because it's just easier. So how do we protect those trees if it's on somebody's lot? So that that's up to the environmental consultant. But, you know, as you know, we have to do a bird survey before we do any development. And so that bird survey will be done. All those trees will be flagged uh, and the whole purpose of the bird survey is not to remove a tree that's on a lot uh, for a certain period of time until the nesting period is over. At that point in time, after the nesting period is over, if that tree is on a lot, it will come out. Obviously, all the trees on the green space will remain indefinitely. So that's kind of how that system works. So the environmental report shows, I think there's two or three trees on people's lot that says it's supposed to remain so that's only supposed to remain through the nesting period as, as far as i know but i i can't be certain about that but See, I, I mean that's, that's the case that's the kind of problems that i'm having right i mean you know here's another unanswered question i mean I, not that it's a deal breaker for me but it's an unanswered question that that uh you know when the environmental person does a map and says here's eight trees that have to stay because that's about all it is i think and, but two of them are on lots and you tell me, well, that they're gonna come out as soon as the nesting is. I'm saying, well, why are those trees flagged to stay? We don't know if somebody's nesting in them now or not anyways. We, we have no idea. Well, that's why we do the bird survey and-, and Yeah, but I mean, those trees are flagged right now in her report. So, you know, you can understand the confusion that I have. Those trees are flagged right now in her report saying remain. That's what it says on the map, tree remain. So mm -hmm. I have a bit of a problem with that. Anyways, um, for me, if we can get the the, uh, the DP questions answered and the, uh, as I said before, the heights of the retaining or the variances that are going to be coming forward, um, that's what I need to see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I have Councillor Scarrow, and then I'll wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, everyone. I've been kind of sitting back and listening to this and I, I really, my heart goes out to Don because I don't think there's any way that you can build a road on green space up a mountain 
without making a hell of a mess. And that's just the way things get built. Now, what we're talking about here is a better way to do things. I've heard a few of our counselors talk about delaying this decision until the master plan is complete. I have very little confidence in the fact that the master plan is going to be complete, it, you know, within a time frame that that makes it reasonable. I very much like Councillor Ireland's suggestion that we simply have the two questions answered by the next time we have to go around through <laughs> this. I also, though I have a great concern for all of the little animals and critters that live on the land, I also have a great concern for electricians and plumbers and carpenters and excavators who live in our community and will not have any work should we not let this plan go forward. A plan that I remind Council that has been in place since 2006. This is not a new idea. This road is not a new idea. We always knew climbing a mountain through a forest, you're likely to have retaining walls. Not a great big surprise. I do have a question for Don though. We talked a lot about retaining walls back when you were doing bench land. We talked a lot about green walls and we talked about our preference for such a thing. Is there any way that you can incorporate green into these uh, retaining walls that we don't know the size of yet. I, I certainly suppose that's possible. Um, you know, we, we have a theme going at Lake Stone. It started down at the lake. Um, we, we've done probably 50 retaining walls um, moving up the hill from Waterside up into the benchlands, now up through the highlands. Um, you know, th this is the last section where we really get into some, you know, some big walls. Um, we, we are a firm believer that we would like to maintain this, this same stone because it's the color is so uh, blends in so well with the, with the natural terrain. That's uh, the one you got running along Tyndall now? Sorry? That stone you have running along Tyndall? Yeah, the one there, the one on the hairpin, and I believe Corey has a rendering of the one that we're proposing on the hairpin turn. But but with that being said, you know, if, if, if that's what council would like us to do, uh, obviously Miguel Belden Corporation has always uh, listened and, and, and has been cooperative. And I'd like to just say one last thing in closing and I won't take any more of your time. You know, we we, we have a an approved master plan that that you know, people accuse us developers of moonscaping and, and doing this and doing that, but we've had an approved master plan that's been in place since 2006 and we've never once ventured, ventured outside the boundaries of that master plan. The amount of green space that was promised to the district in that master plan is only increasing and not decreasing. And we've never done anything outside uh, what was in the guiding document that that, that is Lakestone. And what you're looking at here in front of you is almost identical to the to the roads, uh, you know, ish, uh, located in the 2006 and 2012 master plan. I agree. OK, um, I have a couple of questions, Don, and I'm not sure uh, whether you have all of the answers, but I, 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 I certainly agree with council sentiment. We we've seen development that we haven't liked because we thought we had uh, developers with more sensitivity that wouldn't bulldoze everything flat and then start all over again. Um, so the concern I have, and I knew you had to build that road to grade over a lot of rock, um, that area is a lot of fragile rock too and, and Blasting can affect the drainage and it's supposed to go west, but we're hearing reports that some of the lake stone has affected the lower level drainage, so it's um, impacting neighbors to the east. So, um, and and as Councillor Gamble said up on the top there, and we've I've been up there too, there's lots of little places where 
uh, as we know, most of <clears throat> snowmelt from our medium mountains uh, percolates, and we don't have streams running down, but we do have a lot of rivulets uh, here and there, and uh, development can affect which way they're going to flow, and you don't, uh, you can't really pick up exactly which way they're going to flow to do your planning. So you have to, I think, a lot of sensitivity to to drainage and storm drainage, particularly uh, that will occur. So, and the tree removal issue shouldn't, if the tree has got nesting birds, it's not just for this season, they come back next season too. So I think the tea, if the tree is going to be retained, it should be retained. And we ask people who want to put in a swimming pool on their lot to get an arborist to say what trees will come down to make room for a swimming pool. We should be able to do that with building lots too, whether we have a tree by law or not, that should be part of our building um, area. So I, some of those kinds of things, I think we, we could see go ahead with it if we had some assurance that those things would be uh, would be uh, somehow insured in in the development permit that that uh, we would see things happen that we want to happen and know you can do it and you have um, already done some of it by removing lot counts to make a better grade or make a better curve so just take it a little further and think of of all of the concerns we have i don't agree with councillor scarrow that um, a mountain highway or a mountain road needs to be a mess it can it can be attractive and safe so um i think we want to go from good to great i guess in looking at the uh, next phase of of Lake Stone, and I think um, we can advance it if we have those assurances that it'll it'll be great. So that's my comments, and uh, we'll hear from our chief administrative officer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just a couple of quick comments. Um, <clears throat> I think we would definitely be looking for some specific feedback as to what council expects to come back with this. Uh, we heard, I think, both about the master plan and variances. So if council could be specific as to whether they're looking for both of those items or just the variances would give us a better sense of um, how this needs to come back and what information we need for this to come back. Okay. Um, regarding the variances, part of the reason the variances hadn't come forward to this point is because our engineering department was definitely not comfortable providing any kind of opinions around partial drawings. Um, so they did require 100% drawings to be certain that this is what exactly it was going to look at look like that they could provide their comments around that. So that does take some time. We don't aren't in receipt of those documents today, so it will take a little bit of time for that to come back. But uh, we would definitely be looking for specific feedback as to what council is looking for before this comes back again. OK, and um, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I suppose I would add to that I from my point of view, and I, I speak to Councillor Arlen's comments that when there was a an NA or a yes, no answer on previous reports, we've had an explanation. So on all of those DPs where there is a duplicate yes, no answer or there is an NA um, or there is an answer that conflicts with other statements in the report. Um, and I've given a list to Corey and you, by all means share it with Don um, for clar his clarification as well. Um, for me, I would like to see that as part of the clarification that comes back to Council as well as the variances. OK, and Councillor Gamble. Thank you. I, I just wanted to review the items that I would be looking for um, response on. One was the drainage concerns uh, that need to be addressed, including how they integrate with the full development of Lake Stone. So not not just this summit, but mm -hmm. I think um, Mr. Mayor, you talked about you know some of the potential issues with the, the drainage from the summit being uh, connecting to other parts. 
uh, and the second one was the um, height of retaining walls proposed and the variances. I think I could put those together because I think they're connected. Um, the second fire access clarified and uh, and the time when that would be in place. And uh, the uh, road access to the Highlands South, uh, the fire access and egress, uh, and the number of kilometers of that road. That's, uh, in, I didn't see that, I might have missed it, but I don't remember seeing that. Okay. Um, the tree removal plan and replant, if there is one. And I would be interested in seeing the updated master plan. I think that's very important um, to the overall development. Uh, this is a very important part. Probably, it's probably the signature other than the lakeside. This is the other signature part of this development. It is huge. Okay, thank you. You got what you need, Don? Just like to make one last comment. Um, yep. I don't know if you're all aware, but Lakestone was awarded the National uh, Community of the Year. Uh, we're voted the best community in all of Canada this year. Wow. You're good. Right. Okay. And Blair. Yeah, um, I, I agree with the other comments about what we want to see. I'm not married to, to doing the uh, complete master plan if yeah. we're trying to work together to get this done. But, I mean, it, if everything, all things being equal, I would, of course, like to see it. Uh -huh. But I did have a question for Don that we didn't quite answer because in, in Don, in your statements, you talk about uh, convenience, community, convenience commercial space. Is there any other other than the, the uh, condo hotel? Uh, the answer is uh, the only spot is the in the uh, center club in the bench lands in the amenity building where our current sales center is, that is uh, dedicated to be commercial space. Once the sales center leaves, uh, beyond that, there's no other commercial space. And it was and determined in the plan to, to not draw people from downtown uh, Lake Country. Um, and so the only space is in the uh, sales center. Okay. How big is that space? I'm not very big, uh, probably for a coffee shop, convenience store, something of that size. Yeah. On the master plan, um, Blair, if you don't mind me saying, uh, when I hear council considering uh, wanting the master plan before we move away with, move forward with the summit phase, is beyond troubling for Begal Development Corporation. It's been agreed to by staff and us that this phase would be allowed prior to the master plan. Um, I've been trying to get this master plan to you for over four years. Um, I have, I don't have a ton of hope um, that it's gonna to be to you anytime soon. So um, I think if you're suggesting that this phase be held up for the master plan, uh, th that would be devastating to McDowell Development Corporation. Um, Okay. That's I, I would say, I would just to give some explanation to for you, Don. I in the report it said that the master plan 2020 was 2021 was coming in spring of this year. So this is why we're all talking about the master plan as imminent yeah. because in the report that we've just read, it says it's coming in spring 2021. So Words. spring yeah. is kind of you know that's why we're that's why we're feeling it's achievable. I, as far as we're concerned, we we feel we have a completed master plan, but new things have arisen and they need to be sorted out. And uh, we, we want desperately to sort out anything that we can to get it to you. Uh, and like I said, we've, we've been at it for four years and a quarter of a million dollars. Trust me, we want to get it done. Is it something yeah, you can present as a strategy in. session, as an interim plan, draft? Well, the master plan that's that basically is at it where where it is currently is based on what we provided to you in the strategy session. So we we, we spoke about abandoning the uh, southern access because of the hillside scarring, and we it's taken us over four years, but we've actually physically purchased land on the eastern boundary to provide another access into Lakestone. We 
we physically purchased the property. We can't turn back now. So um, we've been waiting and waiting for the master plan to be finalized and we just couldn't wait any longer. So we actually purchased the property and are designing the road in anticipation of the master plan being approved so we can proceed with development. And 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 in fairness, this this development, uh, summit development is is a part of what we looked at in in 2006 and 2012 and and, uh, and so it's not violating the master plan as such. We just want to make sure it's done right. So, yeah. um, Councillor Arna. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, as I said before, I I am not. You know, because I, I, I perceive that you've had struggles getting this master plan done. So if we're going to try update. to get this next phase the done update. and we have said that the master plan can come after it, then I'm going to go to compromise to get to the point of let me see the answers to those other questions, the DP questions and all of those things. Let me see the variances that are going to be coming forward. I don't even know if if if. Uh, we need to have the variances in, but let's see them. And uh, perhaps it wouldn't be bad to have a, a short strategy session just refreshing all of us because we're not living it like you are, right? And I appreciate that there's there's problems getting it done. You guys have seen it get done. We have limited staff capacity. We've had changes in planning staff. So, you know, I'm sure that a good deal of that not getting done is on us. Mm -hmm. But um, let's try to get it done. So, you know, maybe we don't have that master plan, but you've refreshed it for us. We've seen what's immediate and the changes that are going to take place in this phase that you're going to build right now so that we can be comfortable with that and then we can move forward. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. I, I think this particular phase is the one phase that hasn't changed right from the 2006 plan. It's the, it's the, it's the one phase that's remained constant. But I think a strategy session uh, is a, an incredible idea, and we'd, we'd be very happy to present what we've got so far. We'll see if uh, it fits administration timeline. Can we get somewhere, uh, our chief administrative officer? Yeah, we'll look at the timelines and uh, where that master plan is at from a staff side. And yeah, definitely. Strategy session to get this moving uh, with what we'd like to see. Anybody else comment that that well, work? Just uh, I just wanted to ask Don uh, from his perspective, what is the hold up on that master plan? Like you're saying that you've struggled with it. What what's causing this? Like what's the hold up? I don't I don't really think anybody's at fault, uh, Penny. I think that you know, we, we've been at it for such a long time and, and it's been a, a mutual um, a agreement that nobody required us to do the master plan. We just agreed with staff that it should be done. It should be refreshed to, to bring mayor and council and the public up to date with the changes that have happened at Lakestone. It wasn't something that was required by bylaw or anything else. Uh, and so staff and and McDonald Development Corporation have been working cooperatively for several years to get to where we are today. Um, then, you know, we, we have staff changes and, and new people have new ideas and, and there's things that have come up that need to be resolved and, and we, we really want to resolve them. And, uh, and I'm sure we can, uh, it just, you know, we need the yep. time to to get in everybody together and, and, and solve these problems, right? I, I, you know, I guess just in the, you know, it, to have a sort of open disclosure as a council, we would be wanting to know, like, what is happening? What are the changes uh, that we're dealing with here? Um, because I know that when we did the original uh, master plan, it, it took six months of meetings, at least six months of meetings. And I don't, I think you weren't, you were, I don't know if you were involved at that point uh, at the very beginning. You were later. at the very beginning. Right from many, the many meetings. And so, you know, and then of course the 2012 one was, was revised and now we're talking about some changes. So I, I feel like I'm in the dark. I want to know what those changes are. A strategy sessions being proposed. 
I think that's very important. And I would also like to have some comments from uh, Jamie McEwen so that we have, you know, uh, our our uh, director of planning um, advising us on, you know, what, what sh should we as council be looking for? You know, so we hear from both sides. That would be helpful. Okay. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Where are we with this then? Um, what do you want to do with this development permit here? Well, I think we've, we are talking about deferring it and I think Tanya, I hope you're, are you writing this down? The uh, points that people have raised? What we have, asking. yeah. So we're looking for the resolution from council. Okay, well, I, I have. Here I am. I'll make the resolution if you okay. want. Um, we'll defer this to, to staff to answer the questions that we, you know, the answer the questions that we've asked, uh, yeah. to have a strategy session, and uh, as soon as we can. Are we going to ask? Huh? I thought we were asking for variances as well. Well, that, uh, that's so what I mean. Answer, answer the questions, questions that we've asked. Questions that will so be that answered by staff. Variances. That so includes to have the variance per application as well. The answers to those questions, the variances, all the things that we've all discussed. Um, I'll you know, second that. Oh, you beat okay. me to it. Second. <laughs> Any further you discussion? You're not even there. Is that enough for you, Tanya? So that's option C of the report, I believe, yeah. along with the information that you've provided and a strategy session regarding the master plan. Yeah. Hey, Dawn, can I ask you one question? Sure. One more question. That's that's just a little bit in left field, but it does apply. Is there any possibility of, you know, I, I realize you guys don't build all the houses yourselves, you, you develop properties, but to make people conserve rainwater, not in a major way, but in minor way, because I tell you, there's not one, one project that we ever see, other, well, the one, the last one, we asked them to do it and they did it. And they figured out a way. So, um, you know, it's 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 as simple as having rain barrels. It's not, you know, a massive collection system that you're going to feed your drinking water with or do your laundry with. But, uh, you know, it will help the drainage massively if we do that. And, you know, I, I do it myself. I water my garden with it. I save a ton of water by doing it. Okay. And I think I think it's something we could certainly do in a minor way, but the, the problem we're having is with our geotechnical engineers and all the the problems with with stormwater that they're wanting all of this uh, uh, stormwater into the storm sewer. So it's it's kind of a if you look at the the geotechnical reports that go along with our subdivision planning, uh, they're the ones that are determining what, you know what happens with the stormwater. But to answer your question, if we could do it in a minor way, you know, like maybe keep, you know, two or three barrels full at a time, uh, that, that's something that could be done independently. And uh, it, it's hard to, it's hard for us to control. You know, we, we sell lots and people build their homes and uh, we can put it in our design review requirements. Uh, and it's something we would certainly consider in the future if, if that's something council would like. Yeah, look at that. I, I, that's what I'm looking for, a minor way. Uh, I'm not expecting, you know, major changes in how we collect the stormwater. But if everybody does things in a minor way, then, you know, large groups of people do little things, you get lots done. So, uh, and it's in the DP know, guidelines, so it's something you've yeah. already got. But, you know, collecting rainwater off your roof is, you know, <laughs> it's a simple it's way. We'll sure. Anyways, we haven't voted yet, so. If I could just close by saying I'd like to thank Corey for her excellent report and her professionalism, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with her since she's arrived, and uh, I thank, thanks, Corey, for all your hard work. Okay, very good. Those in favor? Oh, man, I'm listening. We'll meet again in strategic planning. Again? Blair, Blair, you can save water by uh, peeing in your backyard like Bill and I. Uh, yep. I don't have much of a backyard, so I have to pull We're in done. my front yard. <laughs> All right. Next one up. You're not, you're not finished yet. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for being there. Thank you. Uh,
the next one. You do uh, tomorrow still a week? No, we're switching yeah. over at Seven Smith. Or Tamara. No, this one is a uh, well, apartment one. Which one is this? Highland Road. The oh, Highland Road. Oh, crossing agreement. Okay. Yep. Here we are. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're here just to discuss a historic encroachment onto District Road dedication. It's adjacent to 15024 Highland Road. The current owner is looking to upgrade the existing cobblestone armor slopes to large stone retaining walls. The district is seeking council's direction prior to advancing the owner's works in the district road dedication. The subject property is located at the south end of Highland Road off Cornwall Road and Pelmawash Parkway. The current house was constructed in 1977 and the property has no existing access permit. Staff believes the current driveway alignment is likely to be the original. The images displayed on the the images displayed of the original driveway were taken from Google Street View in 2012. Uh, the house at 15024 Highland Road was built at such an elevation that the driveway would not be able to meet the current access and driveway bylaw standards. Uh, notable areas of encroachment are the West Armored Slope with vegetation, which borders the residence's septic field, and the East Armored Slope with vegetation, which borders the edge of the owner's driveway into the district's road dedication. In October 2020, the owner was found to be altering the existing armored slopes uh, in the district road dedication without permits. The district's highways and boulevard policy states permanent structures such as retaining walls are prohibited in the boulevard or road dedication. District staff immediately ordered the work to cease and remediate the retaining wall and slopes to a temporary state. In November 2020, the owner obtained a geotechnical engineer to recommend remedial actions. The existing encroachment at 15024 Highland Road does not currently affect any district utilities. However, the encroachment does limit the area of, area of gravel shoulder typically available for public use. The CAO's comments are as follows. Given the number of existing encroachments in the district, Council will be considering these as an ongoing process. Similar to variances, each of these individual situations have different circumstances, attributes, and considerations and need to be considered on those merits. The impact to the individual property owners can be significant, and in this case, if the retaining wall is not permitted to advance on district road dedication, both the driveway and the septic system would be required to move. All of these factors should be weighed as each of the, these encroachments is considered. Staff requires Council's direction in answering the following question. Does Council wish to permit the continued unauthorized encroachment of the retaining wall in the district road dedication at 15024 Highland Road? The following options are for Council's consideration. Uh, option A, that the owner of the property be permitted to construct the retaining wall within the road dedication subject to the following conditions. Prior to proceeding with construction, applicants required to submit a complete design of the retaining wall for approval by district staff. And prior to proceeding with the construction, the applicants required to register a crossing agreement covenant on title. Option B, that the owner be permitted to construct a retaining wall within the district road dedication without entering into the crossing agreement with the district. Subject to the following, prior to proceeding with construction, the applicant required to submit a complete design uh, for, stitch, for district staff approval. Uh, option C, that the owners of the property be directed to remove the encroachments within the road dedication. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any questions council may have. Councillor, I can't see you. Councillor uh, Gamble? Gamble, I, I don't really have a question. I, um, I think considering the uh, material that uh, you presented and what was in the report that I would uh, move option A. Uh, Councillor Arna? Yeah, I would uh, I would uh, concur with Councillor Gamble and I will second that motion. Okay. 
Anybody else have questions? Any further discussion? Is the I have a question for engineering. Um, do uh, is there some way that uh, a retaining wall can be built without Allen blocks and still have the same uh, like um, they do with the metal uh, sheeting, uh, coffer dam type uh, construction for and and with fill uh, and so that it it doesn't encroach too far into the right of way. Uh, there's currently no retaining wall design that would allow the driveway to exist at a proper elevation. Uh, it would be a very, very steep driveway if we tried to push everything onto the private property. OK. Good enough. That was my Sheet plan. piling would not be a good thing for that neighborhood. No. I can tell you I have some experience with it. <laughs> yeah, they've chosen a really nice uh, rock wall, these two to three foot diameter rocks. Yeah. OK. Uh, any other comment? I just say great report. The uh, uh, option A. Okay. Yep. Opposed. Motion carried. <laughs> Build the wall. Thank you for the report. That was very good. Yeah. And grant and aid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is an amendment to Council's current grant and aid policy. This is to add the community engagement grant subsequent to Council's approval of the budget inclusion. So this has been updated and drafted and the recommendation is that the grant and aid policy be amended to include the eligibility requirements in that policy and that the neighborhood park policy be repealed. Councillor Scarrow. Wherever you are. He's muted. All right, I'm here. You're muted. So moved. So moved. Councillor Gamble second. Yeah. Any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Most right. okay. Good on you. <laughs> you. And um, grant and aid application. We had both applicants waiting online, but I've been told that they went to bed. So <laughs> any further questions, I'm sure we can ask them, but we have a request for 2000 from uh, the um, Skullwise who also applied last year. And then George Elliott has applied for $1,500 to create an outdoor learning center. Need a so motion? do you want to take one at a time or what? Uh, no, we'll do them both together. Councillor McKenzie, moving. Yeah. Councillor. Second. Gamble. Council Seconding. Question. Discussion. Question. Question. Yeah, Rena, can you let us know uh, what amount the skulls got last year? It, uh, they same. got the same amount last year. We gave them two thousand dollars as well. Thank you. Then I support this. Uh, those in favor? Both. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, bylaw audit. Uh, this is a report from our executive assistant just doing a cleanup of our bylaws. So some of them oh. must be repealed by bylaw. So we have to adopt another bylaw in order to repeal a bunch of bylaws. Um, mm -hmm. And others are closed pursuant to our application development application procedures bylaw. So there's a recommendation in front of council for three readings of a penalty bylaw. And Rescinding and closing an official community plan bylaw, and rescinding first reading of a zoning bylaw, and first and second reading of another zoning bylaw. Councillor Ireland moved. Councillor Scarrow second. Uh, those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And uh, Moberly Road service area. And somebody doing that? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's utilities manager Kyle Wilkie. Uh, and quickly share my screen. Thank you for hanging in there this late, Council. And, Thank uh, you. Make this quick. 
All right, so Moberly Local Service Area back in front of Council, uh, looking at 13976 and 13938 Moberly Road. Just a quick bit of background, I'm not gonna go into the whole history of the Moberly Local Service Area, but on March 2nd, we came to Council with a revised servicing strategy for the Moberly Local Service Area, servicing the properties off of Cars Landing Road with a funding strategy. At that time, Council was made aware that the two lots at the very end were requesting to be serviced from the Lake Pine Water System through statutory right of way. Staff advised Council at the time that further analysis of this option was warranted and staff would return to present options. Just so Council is aware, here's a map. The properties in blue are the currently the Moberly Local Service Area. The two properties requesting to be serviced differently are the two at the end here. Uh, and they are requesting to be serviced through this statutory right of way off of Lake Pine Road. Uh, the policy that staff uses for uh, guidance in, in these matters is the uh, water restructure policy, which essentially is for taking over private utilities or expanding water system boundaries, stipulates that the water regulation and rates bylaw applies, which in turn stipulates the subdivision and development servicing bylaws to follow basically our standards. So option one and resolution A is to remain the status quo. This would uh, extend the water main further down Cars Landing Road. Benefits of that is keeps the infrastructure in the uh, road dedication and meets district standards and extends the fire protection further to the north. Cons are it's expensive to run this far for just two properties and it's expensive for the whole Moberly Local Service Group to the tune of about $10,000 property. Um, maintaining of adequate water quality at the water, end of the water main for just these two properties is a concern of staff and also the homeowners have raised the issue that it would be very challenging for them to run the service line up. Oh, I'm moving the face. I just realized I didn't start the slide. But um, hopefully this is working. Uh, to service them as option two, resolution B from the Lake Pine Water System, this would be meeting the current standards or something that's in resemblance of meeting the current standards. Uh, would require to upsize the water main basically back to the intersection of Moberly and Lake Pine Road. Um, of the options that staff lease support is this basically because again we'd have the water quality issues at the end and also accessing and maintaining this water main that we'd own through this stat right away would be challenging. Option three was the, the request that we discussed quickly at last council meeting would basically be at the top of the statutory right away. We we drop the services for the, the properties, all four. This is lots one, two, three, and four. Uh, lots three and four are already part of the Lake Pine water system. Um, basically the pros of this are no water quality concerns. District not responsible for infrastructure down the stat right away. Less expensive for the remaining local, Moberly local service area. Cons of that does not meet district policy or standards to improve fire protection. We did take a look at this around kind of a rule standards standpoint. And basically when you start to get in these spread out lots, some of these types of scenarios, there are provisions, some of the different rule standards where, where this does start to make sense to service properties in this manner. And from a staff perspective, perspective we are comfortable with option three as well in servicing these two lots in this manner. So the resolution before council, again, A, status quo, B is remove them from the Lake Pine Moberly Local Service Area and uh, build to upgrade the water mains to the district standards, or C, remove them from the Lake Pine Water uh, Moberly Local Service Area and connect them to the Lake Pine Service Area. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to council for questions and comments. OK, thank you very much, Kyle. That uh, gets the water down there a little faster. Any questions, Councillor Arles? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the difference between option two and three, I know what the differences are, but basically we get fire protection issues. We have good fire protection or we have Poor fire protection. Is that correct? Both options one and two improve fire protection. Option yeah. three basically does not make any improvements to the fire protection past the uh, 
the final lot that would still be part of the Moberly local service area. Yeah. So uh, in my mind, protecting future owners of that property, I mean, you might not, you know, obviously the cost is going to be more for them. And uh, if I was them, I might not want to, uh, to pay for that. But um, I think we have to consider future owners and future owners of those properties. So I, I would support option two. That's where I'm, I'll leave it. I'll support option two. So option two basically still removes them from the Moberly local service area and puts all the costs on those two properties to extend that main at a tune about half a million dollars. Plus there's also some very challenging access. So from a staff perspective, it's option one or three is what we prefer, but if option three is two is council. Oh, sorry. Council. Yeah. yeah. Can you throw back, can you throw one yeah. back up again? I'm, I'm tired, I guess. Yeah, no problem. Um, oh, oh, sorry, option one, here we are. Servicing can I ask a day. question? Um, have you, Kyle, have you had a chance to talk to the owners of those properties? Yes, I have, Penny. And I, I just can't remember, this is too late at night, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, which did they prefer? They, they're they requesting option three, joining Lake Pine and, and uh, not sure. having to run the services up off Cars Landing because of the challenges of running it up off Cars Landing Road is the main reason for them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought we were talking about the benefits of bringing the water line down Cars Landing further. Yeah. But we're, we're not taking it far enough to include those lots and going to serve them from Lake Pine Road at much less cost and a greater yeah. safety too. But but what I understood in our meeting, and more immediate. what I understood was that we need to increase uh, to uh, increase the size of that uh, and and that not just the size but upgrade that that water line is no. that not right Kyle? that's correct i'm going to share my screen again and just quickly okay. explain it one more time here um so like we need to do that for the district yeah so basically all this area to the south is still going to be part of the Moberly local service area upgrades where we have the funding and strategy in place and then what we discussed last council meeting this part in red would still be extend extended out to this last lot here and that's basically where we end it if if we chose option two or three and then if option three was chosen they would be service off lake pine Right, just these two wouldn't be included in the Moberly Local Service Area, but all this frontage improvement down Cars Landing would still need to occur if Moberly Local Service Area uh, peti had a successful petition to to proceed. And I mean, okay. as water is carried down, you're going to need to extend that line. I mean, that that will happen. Yeah, yeah. And basically everything in red on the picture here is is still going to be extended up to this lot right here. So there's no way you would charge them half a million dollars for two lots. No, so the half a million dollar comment was if these two lots were chosen to do this improvement right here. Yeah. Where they're bringing a, a large diameter water main off a of Lake Pine Road. But they're going to do just the service lines down from Lake Pine to those two lots. That's yeah. option three. Yeah. And at much less cost and more immediate. Yeah, it's immediate. If there's less water quality concerns and it's less cost to the property owners and the Moberly local service area. And the, and the owner's preference. If this is what the owner is requesting just yeah. because of the challenge is to run it up off Cars Landing Road. And it doesn't affect any other mobile users either. But it mm -hmm. does affect fire protection. There is no fire yeah. protection. It does affect what? Fire protection. There, There is no improvements to fire protection up to lots one and two with this option. 
except that they'll have um, pressure water at their uh, where they could put sprinklers in if they wanted. And that's their, their preference. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Kyle, how is that? How is their water, their fire protection different from any of the other lots on the um, Lake Pine service area? The, the existing away. system south on uh, that, whereas you head north on Lake Pine Road from Moberly and Lake Pine is currently deficient to existing standards. Right. So, yeah, it, it, it basically keeps us at that existing level where it is. It is technically deficient to our existing standards. And I'll, do we have any liability around that? If we go back and start to upsize that water main and we don't build it to existing standards, then yes. But but uh, I see Tanya putting up her hand, so I'll let her comment as well. Um, through the mayor, so existing liability is um, a challenging one to, to take on. But currently, I mean, we inherited a system that had a deficient uh, fire flow in it. So do we have any increased um, liability as a result of all the existing homes? No. If we continue to add homes with uh, fire flow, there's always a possibility that there is increased <laughs> as a result of adding, knowing that you don't have fire flow. Except that the um, hmm. uh, existing was built for to existing standards that had fire flow uh, uh, capabilities as they were back in the day and the fire hydrants are probably more easily accessible to those properties from Lake Pine Road than they would be from uh, Cars Landing Road but, uh, because they would be pulling hose downhill instead of uphill but, and they fought fires there. Uh, Councillor Reed and then Councillor Gamble. Is this, thank you. Is there a way of addressing the fire flow issue from the Mobley service area and the water supply issue from the Lake Pine? So splitting the two. Is there a way of? Not really. Okay. It, you get pretty close, but it still technically doesn't meet our standards. If you were to extend so, out to basically option three gets you as close as you're going to get while still servicing from from the lake pine system so you couldn't stick a hydrant in at the end of the mobile road extension which would be within 300 meters of those lots which would then give you the fire protection the, the pressure from the mobile road system and would provide that additional fire support and they're pulling holes uphill then. That keeps them fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only say that because my husband's a fire. Oh, <laughs> Councillor Gamble, you had a question? No, I I think that I think that just after hearing Tanya, um, you know, I think that we need to um, support option A. That's what I want to propose, and I would move that. Can, can I speak uh, now? I, I hear from uh, Greg Buchholz. So we do have fire protection there. It's not like there's no fire protection. There yeah. is fire protection. It doesn't meet our current standards, but we have many, many places throughout the district where we do not meet current standards with, with fire protection. Yeah. And you know that is something we address over time as, as we upgrade systems. So it's, um, uh, it, is, it is consistent with what the other homes have in those areas. Um, and I think really some of the liability aspects, and this is actually something I think we need to uh, we need to consider with council around, even as as we're allowing development permits and so on, some policy decisions. Um, but as I think the big liability is is if we do not let um, the residents under know that they're you know what what their flower rating is, because when they are looking at the uh, their insurance, really what it comes down to. In a lot of cases, um, the insurance underwriters need to know what that risk is that, that, that they're facing. And yep. 
the, the, the guidelines aren't simple. The, 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 when we look at fire protection, it comes down to three things. It comes down to the capability of the, of the fire department. It comes down to the, the, the water system itself, and it comes down to the, the amount of, of work that the fire department does around risk mitigation, education, these types of things. So there's a number of, of ratings that are actually applied to evaluate the, the risk from fire. So as, as our CAO indicated, the, the liability issue is actually a fairly complex one, but there is, there is fire protection in the area. It just does not meet our current standard. And that's the case. And the, uh, I think the uh, biggest thing for council to consider is that people were sold a bill of goods previously and uh, they uh, have dry lots that they can yeah. now at least get a decent water supply to because they they did have some well water but in, in fractured rock, not really an aquifer. So um, they are limited in the amount of water they can use. But if they had uh, a good source, a potable source, uh, and put in a outside standard that they can put out a bush fire if it, before it gets started, they'd have more protection than they have right now and won't have to wait until that um, the funding comes through for the Moberly Road that uh, is going to be below them anyway and and difficult for for fire. So their, their preference, uh, the ones that have talked to me, uh, are uh, that they have a service line uh, from Lake Pine Road to uh, within uh, 300, 500 feet uh, to their house. They'll run their own line to their to their house from a service line on Lake Pine Road. But so uh, I I'd, I'd certainly support uh, uh, three and. Uh, let them get on with their lives. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I'm just saying three. Let's get on with it. <laughs> okay. Second. I, I'm, I'm going three. Second. Second. Those in favor? Yeah. Opposed? None opposed? Or Councilor no, Aaron opposed? Uh, Councilor Aaron opposed, opposed but motion carries. So Backwards thinking. Get the stat right away. Just everything and shitty because everybody yeah. else is. Yeah. All right. We're almost done. Almost. Let's see if we can sneak it all in there before 11 and we have to make a motion. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing the next one uh, for Dave Phillip, our uh, IT manager. This is a grant application. Uh, and the amount in the council report has actually been amended to a reduced amount. It should be 157415. Uh, he had a, included an extra line by accident, so that's the reduced amount. Um, so this is applying to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs for part of the enterprise system, the municipal property and revenue system. And we need a council resolution. Councillor McKenzie moved. Councillor Reed second. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And uh, BC Municipality. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, um, who's doing item, that? Well, item 11, uh, uh, Roman numeral 7 there, the UBC resolution and, and this uh, was actually put uh, recommended by MIABC for us. Um, the question, the essential question is, should a resolution regarding changes to section 744 of the Local Government Act be submitted to the Union of BC Municipalities at the 2021 conference? Um, we, um, there was a, um, a webinar that was hosted and, and this came up in it and we were looking for some resolution to it. There is uh, some issues with uh, climate change that affect this um, and also that this uh, this piece of legislation gives us immunity in, in relation to certain nuisance actions. 
but uh, that immunity has some limitations to it and um, we, we have found that since it was enacted in, in 1987 that uh, this section has essentially remained unchanged uh, surrounding the meaning of breakdown and malfunction, which is the part that we're looking to change. And it has actually resulted in confusion and, and some unnecessary litigation. And moreover, with climate change uh, rendering the one in 100 year events far more frequent than this legislation could have contemplated, there is uh, confusion and, and unnecessary litigation related to this section and it will continue to grow and, and plague uh, local governments in British Columbia. Um, and I believe that in the, in the memorandum that was uh, attached to this, um, we are the only province, uh, the, the other provinces and territories have language similar to what is being, being proposed uh, that we're looking to, to change. So we missed the cutoff date with SILGA, um, but the SILGA general manager did speak to the UBCM resolution and policy analyst and stated that UBCM will accept um, the, uh, the above resolution if, if council so wishes. So that's the, the short introduction for it. Uh, any questions, Mr. Mayor? Councillor Gamble. Um, I would support this resolution. Second. I think that uh, Mike has done the work on it. Councillor Ryan, second. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, report from in camera. From the March in camera meeting. Bob McCubrey be appointed. You got all you got that? You in favor? Yes, Councillor yeah. Gamble, Councillor Ireland, those opposed? No. No, those in favor? None opposed. <laughs> if you. I may, Mr. Mayor, resolutions aren't required. These are just being presented for information oh, and brought just, forward. Oh, that's right. Okay. I thought we needed it. Just go with them. <laughs> for information. Declassified from confidential, though. But that doesn't take the resolution. I thought it did. All right. It was on casting it the other day, so. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got four minutes. Councilor Adams, it's up to you. I'll, I'll take anybody that's got an item. I got an item. Oh. This motion from Council got any? as well. Okay, then uh, we're adjourned. Whoa. No, no there's a notice Jeremy of motion. Jeremy has notice of motion. Big part. Yeah, I, I can get this under the wire. I got four minutes. Yep. Oh, you, you had something? Okay, yeah, yeah. let's hear it, Jeremy. So we got uh, that staff be directed to investigate and report back on potential amendments to the zoning bylaw to permit the processing of dried or packaged food stuff as a secondary suite in the direct control 11 DC 11 live work zone at the lakes. So that's regarding uh, Paula Dyqua. She has that uh, food drying business and uh, it's in it when she moved from Makubri plateau over to the lake mm -hmm. subdivision she was in contravention and she didn't realize so want to try and help her out and get uh if she can have a gunsmithing place up there i don't understand why she can't drive some fruit <laughs> okay councillor Arna. what yeah I'll, I'll second that motion i actually have been in her was in her uh business when it was on mccubry road and, yeah uh, it's it's a good it's business pretty clean okay. and dry uh, Jeremy's 100% right. If you can gunsmith in there, then you should be able to drive for it. Councillor Reed? Very clean. I, I, could we clarify, are we talking just vegetable matter or are we talking animal products as well? Because I mean, by the word, yeah. food, by, but by the a definition of food stuff, you can have, uh, yes. you know, other curing businesses there. And I don't think that would be quite what the intention <laughs> was. So maybe Certain we can clarify. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we'll make sure that we, we can get that changed too to, to be specifically not foodstuffs, but just uh, fruit. It includes cannabis. So, so. <laughs> Amy? Thank, thank you very much, Your Worship. I think uh, with, with that wording in, in mind, we can go forward and advise council. Uh, council doesn't have to feel like they are making the uh, land use decision now. We can report back and explore the pros and cons <laughs> of all of that and uh, prepare a report for you. Um, that's really fulsome, and then you can decide which way to go. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Just quickly, I want to make a notice of motion for next meeting. 
Okay. Uh, and it's just going to be about adding uh, lighting to our nuisance, uh, the definitions of lighting to our nuisance bylaw. Or mentioning okay. lighting in the nuisance bylaw. We apply it, but we don't talk about it. Okay. And it's perfect because this is dark sky week. I don't know if Blair knew that. Councillor Ireland knew that, but I, I didn't know that. But uh, it's dark I'm 100 percent with it. It's dark sky week, and it's been 10 years since uh, Jasper National Park has been uh, designated as a dark sky preserve. So, fantastic. Well, we have been. I, I'm not moving to Jasper. 40, it's too cold. 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, Tanya, well, we don't expect to be motion, this late so. most times. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. Just good is discussion. Just making a note of that notice of motion, right? And you'll we'll discuss it next time around. All right. Anybody else? We are adjourned. Good, good night, night all. all. <laughs> and good night. Nobody's going to turn into a pumpkin now. We <laughs>